The November 10th, 2021 meeting of the Local Planning Agency of the City of Dunedin will now come to order. The Local Planning Agency is an advisory board of citizens appointed by the City Commission. This board is comprised of volunteers to represent the thoughts and concerns of the community. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to make recommendations to the City Commission regarding each item on the agenda. Tonight we will be conducting a public hearing, therefore this meeting is open to the public. Anyone in the audience who wishes to give testimony to any of the items on the agenda will need to be sworn in by the City Clerk. This swearing in process will occur after tonight's first agenda item, which will be the approval of the draft minutes from the last LPA meeting. Please be aware that this local planning agency is not a quasi-judicial board and therefore has no final decision-making power. Our procedures, however, are structured in a quasi-judicial manner for the benefit of for those who come before it. Tonight's format will be as follows. I will introduce each item on the agenda, after which the city representative will present information about it. Thereafter, the members of the local planning agency will respond to the city representative. Finally, anyone from the public may come forward. Those from the public wishing to give testimony will need to approach the dais, identify themselves, and then utilize the speaker's lectern in order for their comments to be recorded. Upon the conclusion of the public hearing, the local planning agency will consider the evidence before it and will vote on the agenda item. That voice vote is the rendition of the order of the board and there will be no written decision issued by the board. For the record, uh, Mr. Graham is uh, excused absence tonight from this meeting um, and it's with regard to form, well he's not present but he is present, he's here but he's not here and I'll mention this a little bit later on. So he is excused absence as a result of being a member of this board. The first item on tonight's agenda is the approval of the draft minutes from the October 13th 2021 LPA meeting. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Uh, I have already given some corrections to the clerk's staff today, and those have already been made. If there are no others, then I'd like to hear a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. I'll make the motion for accepting the minutes as corrected. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the minutes as corrected. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed by the same sign. The minutes stand approved as corrected and the motion carries <coughs> unanimously. Uh, the Rebecca Slick Schlichter city clerk will now swear in all persons uh, wishing to speak to or give testimony to any of tonight's agenda items. So if you think you may want to speak, now would be your opportunity to be sworn in. Do you swear the testimony you are about to give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. The second item on our agenda tonight is the design review application 21-09. Review and make a recommendation of design review application 21-09 to remove an existing three-story office building and build a new 197,805 square foot two to four story mixed use building located at 380 Main Street and 830 Douglas Avenue. Has anyone had any ex parte communication regarding this application? Hearing none from the board, I would like at this time to uh, make note of the fact for the record that form 8B um, the memorandum of voting conflict for county, municipal, and other local public officers has been submitted by Thomas James Graham, who was a member of this board, but he has uh, inured himself for tonight's meeting. Uh, and the purpose is to have, um, he has been retained as a consulting architect by Founders Hospitality, LLC, for the development of the project design review application 21-09, known as Dunedin Residences, located at 380 Main Street and 830 Douglas Avenue, 
and which is to be reviewed by the local planning agency of the city of Dunedin. If there are no other conflicts or any other ex parte communication at this time, I would like to turn this application over to our Mr. Kinney. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the local planning agency. It's my pleasure to be here tonight on behalf of the Community Development Department, George Kinney. Um, and I will certainly jump right into this. Um, the application uh, information, as uh, the chair had mentioned, is the project name for this particular uh, project is the Sterling Hotel, Dunedin Residences. The owner is Arliss Construction USA, LLC. The applicant is Founders Hospitality, LLC. The representative is Joe DeLuca. The designers are RBA Architecture. And as was already mentioned, uh, this is an applicant. Applicant is seeking the design review approval to construct a mixed-use project on the two subject properties that were mentioned, that being 380 Main Street and 830 Douglas Avenue. The request generally includes uh, a basement floor to include underground vehicle, golf cart, and bicycle parking, a ground floor to include hotel, condo, transient rental units, retail space, restaurant space, fitness space, and meeting room space. The second floor is primarily uh, limited to hotel, condo, transient rental units, and then the third floor uh, includes hotel, condo, transient rental units, and a roof patio. There is a small portion of a fourth floor, uh, which includes a pool, a deck, and a patio bar. And I'll go through all of that through the, with the rendering so you'll, you'll get a good feel for where everything's located. <clears throat> uh, the overall project area includes two parcels of land that total 1.78 acres. And I will try to, with these first couple slides, just orient you to the subject property. Um, there is in your backup a parcel breakdown because uh, there is two parcels here that we're dealing with. Again, we're dealing with 380 Main Street, which is a 0.77 acre parcel, and 830 Douglas Avenue, which is a 1.01 acre parcel. The aerials that you see up on the slide show those two properties separated. Um, the property uh, at 830 Douglas Avenue is uh, bounded to the north by Monroe Street and to the east by Douglas and to the west by the Pinellas Trail. Uh, the property to the south, 380 Main Street, is bounded to the south by Main Street, to the east by Douglas, and to the west by the Pinellas Trail. And here's just a closer view of the subject property at 830 Douglas Avenue, so you can see uh, that existing aerial. Uh, you can see in this aerial that it's currently occupied by the Ocean Optics Building, which is a three-story existing office facility. And then if you look again at the parcel a little, little farther south along 380 Main Street, that is the area that really contains the parking area that's, that services Ocean Optics and which is currently leased by the city um, as public parking. The road network, uh, as I mentioned, that surrounds the two parcels includes Monroe Street to the north, um, Douglas Avenue to the east, Main Street to the south, and the Pinellas Trail to the west. Surrounding zoning uh, uses are encapsulated in a table in your backup. Um, to the north, um, you have downtown core that would be the north side of Main Street. That's occupied by a, a small law office. To the south, downtown core, you have retail and restaurant uses. Um, to the east, uh, it's also downtown core, and Pioneer Park is over there, along with some other restaurant and residential uses. And to the west, of course, is the Pinellas Trail. With respect, let me just uh, walk through a couple of photos, too, just to orient the board. Um, this first picture shows the existing Ocean Optics building uh, from Douglas looking west through that building and through that site. That, of course, is the property, uh, the Douglas Avenue property. This is looking from Douglas towards Main Street, again through the Ocean Optics Building. Gives you a, a view of what's kind of currently occupying the site. Um, this is a picture from Maine looking north with the Pinellas Trail to the west, and again looking into that existing parking area and the Ocean Optics Office Building. With respect to project overview, I just want to give you a little more detail uh, with regards to each of those floors that I broke down earlier. With the basement floor, uh, that is to include the 118 underground vehicle parking spaces with additional area uh, to be set aside for golf cart parking and bicycle storage. Uh, the parking area will be open to the public but will be valet operated. The valet operation will be structured to fin financially incentivize the use of alternative mobility options 
and will offer a 50% reduction fee for such use. Um, guests will be encouraged, guests of the hotel would be encouraged to use golf carts, transit service, shuttle service, bicycles, and pedestrian mode options. Uh, charging stations will also be available in the garage area. On the first floor, as mentioned, um, the ground floor includes a, uh, a ground floor includes a porta uh, entry oriented to Douglas Avenue. Nine units of the proposed 89 transient hotel condo units are located on this floor, uh, with approximately 4,800 square feet of retail space oriented to Main Street and Douglas Avenue, approximately 4,500 square feet of restaurant space oriented to Main Street and the Pinellas Trail. Um, the ground floor further includes uh, approximately 5,000 square feet of meeting space able to accommodate up to 264 people and also, and also included on the ground floor is about 4,500 square feet of fitness of a fitness spa area um, that will be available for public use. There are two open courtyards uh, that are incorporated into the first floor and oriented towards the Pinellas Trail. Uh, the courtyards total approximately 14,500 square feet and also will be open to the public. And I'll show you some pictures of all this as, as we get into the architecture. The second floor, as mentioned, is primarily just transient hotel condo units. Um, the 44 of the units, uh, 44 of the proposed 89 units would be located on this floor. The third floor, uh, 36 units of the proposed 89 transient hotel condo units are located on this floor. This floor would also include a rooftop patio for a portion of the building oriented toward Main Street and the Pinellas Trail. So that rooftop patio is really sitting on that second level. And again, I'll show you some photos, uh, some renderings in a moment. And then finally, the roof area, as was discussed, um, includes a pool, sun deck, and patio bar uh, area open for the public, open for public use as well. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit when we get into the architecture about how they oriented that space into kind of the center of the site. Um, from a zoning perspective, um, both parcels are zoned downtown core. Um, the downtown core category does permit mixed use development and the hotel condo approach by right. Um, the proposed use of the properties is consistent with the description and general character of that DC zoning district. Um, from a dimensional standard standpoint, um, within the CRA district, there are three distinct street types, as the, as the local planning agency knows, listed as A streets, B streets, or C streets. So this next slide will kind of show you how those street orientations sit on the two subject properties. At 830 Douglas Avenue, that's categorized as a C street. 380 Main, 380 Main is, is categorized as an A street. Um, so in your backup are some of the, are the applicable dimensional standards that apply to both of those streets. So for, for the, for, so as it relates specifically to building height and the number of stories that are permissible under the street type, for the A street portion or main, or that main street parcel, the maximum building height in that, in that district is 36 feet and there's no opportunity to ask for additional height. In the C street, the maximum building height is again 36 uh, feet, but you can ask for permission to exceed that 36 feet with commission approval. And that's what you're gonna see as part of that rooftop patio and bar. So that, that, that patio pool and bar are positioned on the Douglas Avenue site so that they can ask for some additional height. Um, for this project, uh, the applicant is requesting city commission approval for additional height. As I mentioned, as it relates to that portion of Douglas Avenue parcel C, uh, the, the height requested to accommodate the pool patio uh, is not to exceed 42 and a half feet. Um, the pool and appurtenant features are centered um, at the rooftop with the intent to minimize or eliminate the ability to see these items from adjacent streets in the trail. And again, I'll show you some renderings in, in, a, in a short minute that will, will demonstrate that. The applicants in this particular case are also asking for a bit of a variation to the step back provision. So they are requesting, instead of this 10 foot step back that you would get above the second floor where you just push it back horizontally, they're actually doing some vertical um, insets and offsets and fenestration that they will, I'm sure, talk to you about as the rationale for asking for that step back to go in that, in that direction uh, versus, versus the traditional step back. Um, and in addition to alternating the design uh, in further support of the step back request, I think you'll hear the applicant talk about the fact that they're providing very deep sidewalks along both Douglas Avenue and Main Street. 
um, as much as 18 feet at the eastern end of Main Street. With respect to the hotel, hotel uh, condo hotel units, uh, the requirements for that, those particular types of units are found in section 107.33 of our land development code. They do require that such rooms be available for the owner for use not more than 60 days within a calendar year, providing, however, that any owner's stay shall be no longer than 30 consecutive days, getting back to that transient nature of the hotel and, it, and the hotel unit, and separated by not less than 60 days between periods of occupancy. Um, the unit shall be available for lease to transient guests in intervals of 30 days or less for the remainder of the calendar year. Any units offers as, co as condominiums are subject to the provisions and other additional requirements noted in the, co in the uh, condo hotel section. And then finally on the kind of the initial land use side, the land use uh, um, uh, designations themselves are both the same. They are CRD or Community Redevelopment District. Uh, again, a mixed-use development, i.e. with lodging, retail, restaurant, assembly uses, and such is consistent with that CRD uh, underlying land use. As you also know, the land use pretty much dictates what the density can be for a particular site. So in this case, from a residential density standpoint, the CRD land use plan category permits temporary lodging uses up to 50 units per acre. Combined, as I mentioned, the two parcels are 1.7 acres, so when you do the math, that permits 89 units, 80, 89 transient development units, and that is exactly what the applicants are asking for. Uh, the underlying CRD also dictates the impervious, sur impervious surface ratio at, for, with coverage not to exceed, in this case, 0.85% uh, of the lot, or 62,632 square feet, or 1.44 acres, and that is I'm, I'm sorry, let me, let me step back. That is what the applicant is proposing, which falls underneath that 0.85 impervious surface ratio, so they meet that requirement. Um, from a compatibility analysis standpoint, um, as the commission knows, the, or as the board knows, the city comprehensive plan under goal two, objective 2.9 in the future land use element requires the city to evaluate development and redevelopment as it relates to the compatibility of the surrounding land uses. Um, physical compatibility of the proposed development or redevelopment with the surrounding environment shall include evaluating height, architecture, historical aspects, the existing structures, existing natural features, existing land uses, existing residential densities, and economically related uses. The existing building uh, on 830 Douglas Avenue is a three-story uh, in, in height structure and sits at about 40 feet measured to the top of the parapet. Uh, applicant has provided, and it's in your backup as an exhibit, Exhibit N, uh, provided a map and narrative showing other city properties and a mix of heights ranging from approximately 28 feet to 46 feet. So uh, again, that exhibit's in your backup if, if you want to refer to it. Um, the applicant's, and I'm sure the applicant will also address, um, you know, some of those issues as well. The applicant's perspective renderings further illustrate the relationship of the proposed structure to the surrounding buildings and uses, so we'll talk a little bit. Again, I'll get into the, the photos in a second and, and kind of show you those perspective renderings and how it matches up with what exists uh, down there now. Um, next, I have uh, Bob Ironsmith sure. with me here to talk a little bit about the, the CRA's perspective on this. The, the, um, the uh, applicant did meet with the CRA Advisory Committee in, on July 15, and Bob was kind enough to facilitate that, and I sure. just kind of wanted to give him a minute to talk about that. Uh, thank you, George. Bob Ironsmith, uh, CRA Director. So uh, good evening. Uh, this is an exciting project. You know, we're, we're very pleased to see this come before you tonight. This is something of an area of focus we've been working on in the downtown for, for, for quite some time. And there's a lot of great features with this project. I know you're going to see the architecture. We think your architecture is just uh, outstanding. Uh, this uh, kind of Mediterranean revival. The other things I want to kind of convey to you is a hotel is one of the best economic activity engines you can have in the downtown. It's what we consider a captive market, meaning that the people go from the hotel to support retail and other merchants downtown. We are, you know, always a little bit uh, uh, paused if we see too much restaurant and bar type activity. It's great. They're all doing well. But we also want to make sure we have support for the retailers. How do you do that? A hotel supports the retailers. So we're kind of we're kind of excited to see something like this take take shape. For a number of years, this property obviously has been vacant. 
It's been kind of a void or kind of a uh, kind of a nondescript little area in or downtown. It's kind of a little bit of divide for walkability. And uh, to have something like this happen and to get the foot traffic and, and uh, see that happening downtown is, is very much a positive. Right now, we're just leasing it for parking. And I think you're all well aware that the city uh, just went ahead to purchase the property there at Scotland and Douglas, which gives us the opportunity for a future parking garage. We knew that was a big item. When we met with the developers early on, this would be back in the, in the spring, we mentioned to them really three or four things that we needed them to look at. One, stay within the code. They've done that for the most part. We're very happy with that. Two, you're going to need to do some artwork. They said, no problem. Also, you want to have some greenery. Make sure you have some greenery, a living wall or something like that. They said, sure. The other item is make sure you meet your parking requirements, and it was up to staff also to secure some additional parking because we're going to lose that once this project gets built. And that other property that we just purchased at Douglas and Scotland now gives us that, that, that opportunity. So we're very excited about that. From an economic perspective, just looking at the numbers, and we're doing much more than that, but I certainly want to convey the numbers to you. We look at this at about a $40 million uh, initiative. That is very substantial in our downtown. If this goes on to tax rolls at 80%, we calculate about $32 million. We look at this as generating about $300,000 uh, per year once it gets on the tax rolls. It's very significant. And at this point in time, I'm just going to share some other numbers with you from a CRA perspective. We have about $234,000 in parking leases downtown. Uh, one will go away when this gets developed. So say we have about $200,000 in parking leases. We now have debt service of 415000 on the property that we're acquiring. So we got $615,000 going toward parking. That's just close to almost half our budget within the CRA, not counting salaries. So having additional revenue to do more things downtown, that's very, very positive. And let me share with you something else that we're very, very pleased to see. This area has been an area of focus for us. Uh, I know George has mentioned we got the Jar John R. Lawrence Pioneer Park just opened up. And we had a ribbon cutting yesterday. The park looks fantastic. We're going to be widening and doing streetscape in front of Casatinas to make that more walkable and some landscaping and some benches. You're going to see that. And, of course, we just purchased the, the property there at, at Douglas and Scotland. This area is certainly now changing. It's transforming, which is good, and this is what we wanted to see. The other thing I want to share with you real quickly is um, we're about $200 million downtown right now, about $200 million on the property uh, appraiser's tax roll. We're going to rapidly become a $350 million downtown. We're very, very strong. Why? This type of project, uh, obviously the one that's approved that will start in February, which is the Gateway, which is the hotel and apartments. And, of course, we have the new City Hall. you got Skinner Boulevard with complete streets going to happen. There's an awful lot going on in the downtown. And I think this project really fits in very nicely what we're looking to achieve, which is a very walkable downtown that supports the businesses that we all love. And um, I don't know if it's appropriate, but I'm happy to answer questions now or later, whatever you'd like, George. I, I, I do have some questions for Bob, but would you like me to wait until you're done and we come back to Bob? Whatever you want for me. The pleasure of... Uh, or should we get them while, we, while we've got them? Uh, I'm not going anywhere, but whatever you'd like, whatever the pleasure of them. You have a memorandum that you included as an exhibit, okay? Mm-hmm. And, of course, you just outlined everything you just mentioned about the 304000 uh, annually that, that the CRA... Uh, would receive from the tax increment financing of this project, okay? And right. It doesn't include any other that goes to the general fund, so that's a biggie, too. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Um, a couple of things. Um, you also go on to tell us about sunsetting, and I ask you this question every time we talk about mm. this uh, TIF issue. Uh, the CRA sunsetting in, in 2033, well, that's 11 years away, so... How big of an issue is that? I see that you've got a, a midterm review for the CRA. It's required by Pinellas County. Do we anticipate that there could be some issues? You know, if we're looking at 300000 that we're going to get out of this project over the next 10 years, it sure would be nice that the tax in income and financing and, and all of this tax issue was going to remain in place. I, yeah, uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Macero. So uh, basically, it could be short and it could be nine years, the time this actually physically gets on tax rolls and gets built. Uh, the other item you met with, mentioned with the midterm review, it, it, it is pretty much determined the county is going to lower their pro rata sum to the millage of what the city is. 
They're currently at 5.4 mils. We'd go down to about, if, if we stay at 4.1 mils, so it could be a 10 or 15% hit to the CRA. So that number, that 300. Could be a little less. Could, could be, uh, yeah, 10%. Based on some issues that we're, we're in gray areas with right now. Yeah, it could, it could be, you know, in reality, if, if I'm just running some quick numbers in my head, so excuse me, you know, it could be 250000 a year as opposed to the okay. 300000 um, Now, uh, you, then you went on to talk about the proposed incentive, okay? And you mentioned $150,000 for streetscape enhancements. Are you referring to the city's cost? for these streetscape enhancements? Yeah, I'm looking in partnership with them, uh, city side so then and the developer. So out of this, this total 300 or $3 million, uh, we could be responsible for $150,000 worth of improvements? Yeah, 150 would come out. We, all, we were already looking to do Main Street because we're going to do Costantinas across the street, so we already had factored that in, but now we're looking to work more with the developer as far as how their pro you know, project aligns. We're also looking on the Douglas side to do more of a, uh, uh, a bus pull-off as opposed to uh, uh, with those medians. So we're also we're always looking at trying to take out those medians and make the sidewalk a little bit wider, walkable, and also do a bus pull-off with PSDA. So we already had thought and programmed, but we're also now might as well work in conjunction with the project. I, I, I guess so. Let me ask yeah. you this very broad question. And, and I know, know you're not a, a soothsayer and you... So I'm just going to ask it anyway. So it looks like uh, we could generate through tax in increment fa financing of annually $304,000 a year. Could, could, yes. And, of course, we just talked about the sunsetting of the CRA, and we've talked about the review by the, the county that might drop, you know, uh, the share that they would be providing back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, so... But uh, I think... Two, what's not in here, and I know I, I, I made that. I, I, want, I, want to, I want you to give me some comfort that this stuff is pretty, pretty oh, this, much going to stay this, where. Th this stuff is pretty solid, but what I was going to mention is this doesn't even account sewer, water, electric franchise fees, phone franchise fees, solid waste. Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm uh, interested in the fact that the CRA money, the tax income and financing, can be used for things like that parking garage. Sure. Okay? So, yes. And, and I don't think... The, the money for the the sewer and the water and all that can go towards something like a... Uh, no, P Penny for Pinellas could, though. It's a generated. Right. Penny okay. for Pinellas so could. Th that's why I'm concerned with the tax increment finances. Sure. I, well, I think it's very realistic between the, the hotel at the Gateway and the site, even considering the a drop in, in the pro rise share from the county, that there would be a half a million dollars that we'd be able to receive to be able to take on some debt service. But... It, it just Which talk, helps pays for things like this new parking. Right, but but I do want to be on the record here. The CRA doesn't have all the money to cover for a parking garage. There's going to have to be other funds and other things to do because we're taking on some huge commitments between Skinner Boulevard and this recent property acquisition. So I just, uh, yeah, okay. there's no way the CRA could do that without other assistance from other funds. So I just I just want to make sure that people understand that with all the debt service that we're taking on. Most important, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I know people think the CRA can be totally self-sufficient, and that's just not always the case with what we're looking to do. Skinner is a $6.5 million, $7 million project. So that's a big boy, complete streets project, and that's going to take a lot, too. And that will come out of tax and commit finance? Yeah, CRA is going to take on some debt in order to do that. So and we're looking to debt. see if we can... Uh, you know, we're in a position where well, we're trying to see if we get some stimulus funds, too, or, or ARPA, the American Rescue Plan. So, yeah, we, we have some... Strong needs. The CRA has really stepped it up here with buying the $4 million piece of property. Okay. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. I had a couple things. If we get back to the tax, um, we, I keep seeing that term condo hotel. Um, will there be a month or a nightly sales tax similar to a hotel tax? I, you know, I, I would let the developer answer that. And my thought would be, yeah, it would be similar to like, uh, you know, this type of format to me, and again, I'm going to let the developer talk about this, but kind of like the Sand Pearl down there in Clearwater. That's kind of a Thanks. condo hotel. That's kind of what I have in my mind, and I, I think that's kind of what they're thinking, but I don't want to, uh, don't want to. But sure, you're going to have Penny for Pinellas and tourism and things like that generated off the of sales there. I'll wait for my. I'll wait okay. For okay. Sure. They're better equipped to answer that. Yeah, no Thank problem. you, Bob. Are there any other questions, Mr. Ironsmith? 
Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, I kind of wanted, so we're at the point now where I can kind of we'll walk through some of the design review uh, criteria, and um, at the same time, I'll try to show you some of the renderings that have been provided by the architect for the developer. Um, as you all know, there are several provisions that are required by the Land Development Code, the first being common open space. Um, um, for this particular project, a mixed-use development, a minimum common open space of 50 square feet per thousand square gross floor area is required for a total of 3,956 square feet. Uh, as I indicated earlier, the developer is offering more than 14,500 square feet um, through the incorporation of those two open-air courtyards as well as the fourth floor uh, pool deck and patio bar. Um, in addition, the applicants must adhere to the minimum impervious surface ratio, which we already discussed, and they are, are, they are meeting that as well. And they, are, they had a, a 0.85 is required. It is currently planned at 0.81. From B, a circulation mobility standpoint, um, access to the underground parking structure is proposed from Monroe Street, while the Porta Cachere will be accessed from Douglas Avenue. Um, no vehicular access driveways are planned for Main Street. Pedestrian circulation and mobility accommodations include incorporating wide sidewalks and walkways along all street frontages. Two internal courtyards are oriented towards the Pinellas Trail to further invite pedestrian activity for the general public, hotel guests, and patrons. Um, hotel guests, as mentioned previously, also will be encouraged to use alternative transportation mode choices, particularly for shorter day trips. Um, the two, uh, the uh, in addition to, and there's also surrounding transit opportunities available, uh, you know, at this particular property. <coughs> the hotel also, as mentioned, will provide for the use of golf carts and bicycles, and will structure that valet service to provide for a, a fee discount when utilizing one of those forms of, of, of mo one of those mode forms. From a parking loading and stamp, uh, parking loading stacking standpoint, all street parking loading and stacking areas have been designated uh, or designed in accordance with uh, the appropriate section of the land development code and included in your um, backup is an off street parking table. Um, and it's broken down by the uses of the facility as proposed. So for the hotels, uh, the parking count required is 0.8 per room. For the restaurant, it's one per 400 square feet. Uh, for the retail space, also one per 400 square feet. For the fitness spa, it's 1.5 spaces per 1,000 square feet. For the bar, it's one per 200. And for the meeting space, it's one per 800. In total, the, the needed um, parking spaces for the entire site is 124 spaces, and the applicants are providing 118. However, 124 is not what is ultimately required because there are two discounts, basically, that are offered as part of being in the downtown core and the first being transit availability. So for sites that are well served by transit, uh, a 10% reduction in the parking requirement can be applied. Uh, and in this case, uh, for any, any site that has a PSTA stop within 500 feet from, the, from, from their facility and with the 60 minute peak hour service. In this case, the applicants have that and they have provided that um, um, exhibit uh, for your consideration. Um, so that 10% reduction then would take the 124 spaces that are required down to 112 spaces, which is uh, less than what is being uh, proposed by the applicant at 118. The second discount, if you will, is the uh, bicycle orientation. Applicants will be providing um, bicycle, um, um, bicycle racks uh, in accordance with the code that will offer another two-space reduction. So in the end, um, uh, the applicant is um, required to um, provide 110 spaces uh, by code and 118 are provided by this project. From a buffers and screening standpoint, uh, there are no buffers or screening is required where mixed use zoning districts, but that said, the applicant has developed a green space plan that has been reviewed and recommended by the city architectural review committee. Uh, and the fin those final landscaping plans would be approved by the city arborist at infrastructure review. And I'll get to those, I'll get to those renderings, uh, that green space plan as soon as I get through some of the renderings here. Um, from a fences and walls perspective, there are not fences or walls shown on the site plan. And now kind of into the architectural style. So I have some renderings pulled up. This will kind of give you an idea of, of what the facility looks like and how it will be oriented with respect to the two major uh, crossroads of Main Street and Douglas. 
So this first picture um, you can kind of see uh, is kind of standing right at that intersection at Main Street and Douglas with the project being off to the right hand side. And you can start to see some of the form and architectural shape that, that the applicants are proposing. This rendering's pulled back some, you know, again at that, at that intersection at Douglas and Main Street, uh, looking west uh, through, the, through the facility as proposed. If you can kind of see on the back side of Main Street where the building steps down to two stories, that is that open uh, courtyard, uh, open patio, of the second story, second story deck. Uh, this is a picture kind of looking through Monroe down Douglas, um, and you can see again how it would line Douglas Avenue. Uh, rendering here looking north through um, through Douglas and Maine into the project area. And again, you can see on the left-hand side where it steps down into that um, second story deck. You can kind of be, you can kind of start to see, uh, well, we'll have some pictures of the, here's a better picture of the pool area. There's the rooftop pool, as you can see, and it sits um, on, again, that, uh, that uh, Douglas Avenue parcel and would be not high, any pertinent structure related to that would not be higher than 42 and a half feet. This is another picture. You kind of see the, the orientation towards, uh, that's looking kind of like through the intersection of Douglas and Monroe. Again, looking west. Start to see some of these elevations. This is uh, kind of gives you an idea of some of the architectural style. You can see some of the window treatments, some of the murals that will be proposed. Um, they may not obviously be exactly this, but it gives you an idea of what they're looking to do with respect to incorporating art. And I'll get to that section in a moment. Picture looking directly into that corner at Douglas and, and Main Street. Again, you notice the sidewalks are, and you'll see a little bit more on the sidewalks in a couple of renderings coming up. They're, again, very deep, uh, particularly along Main Street. And this gives you a, kind of a really good look at that, at those sidewalks, um, deep sidewalks, with some of it being covered for, for outdoor dining opportunities. These are the courtyards that open up to uh, the Pinellas Trail. And you can kind of see the out, there's an, actually an outdoor uh, fire pit kind of shown in this particular example and rendering. Another photo of that courtyard kind of looking, if you were elevated above the trail, looking down. And again, this is some of that um, wider sidewalk, portions of which are covered for this type of uh, outdoor dining experience. <coughs> <coughs> This would be that fourth floor, that pool deck. Uh, again, it's pinched in towards the center of the, of the structure, so um, it is, um, in essence, um, covered from view from uh, any street view you might have along Douglas or Main. And just a few more photos. Again, you can start to see some of the architecture. <coughs> uh, the, uh, the applicant will talk about the, the the, uh, the design aspects of it and how they have uh, fenestrated it and, and have tried to make it look like different buildings all on the same, all on the same site. You see some of the brickwork here, again, some of the public art, some of the balcony work. Again, pictures of those deep, deeper sidewalks along Main and Douglas. Main and the trail. Main and the trail. The trip. Another look, you can start to you can start to see some of the uh, the green space aspects with the trees and some of the, the 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 live growth against some of the brick. This is the entry along Douglas. <laughs> This is, a, again, a fountain feature in the Port of Cachera. This is, Bob kind of mentioned the, the bus pull-off area. That is, that is uh, part of this 
uh, request to provide an area for a bus pull-off or trolley pull-off. There's the entry to the underground parking garage along um, Douglas. Is that Douglas or Monroe? Monroe. Douglas and Monroe, right? That's Monroe, right? Yeah. Again, you see the large kind of courtyard area out in front with the wider sidewalks. And a pers an evening perspective with lighting. And again, that fountain feature. It's more of a daytime perspective. And again, an evening perspective. <coughs> portion of the building. And you can start to see some of the signage work, the detail. Um, needless to say, the Architecture Review Committee um, thought this was very well done, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second as well. Again, looking into the courtyards from the trail and th those will be accessible to the public. And that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the actual, the, the, the rendering side of it. I'll also show you a little bit on the floor plan side. Um, obviously, from an architectural standpoint, the projects uh, within the CRA must be designed utilizing one of the five approved architectural styles in the Cooper Johnson architectural guidelines. Um, the applicant has, in this case, chosen the Mediterranean Revival approach, which is one of the city-approved styles. Um, applicant was before the Architecture Review Committee, actually on two separate occasions. Uh, those meeting minutes are included in your packet, um, and the elevations and perspective renderings along with the materials boards are also included in your packet. You just saw the renderings, and I'll, I'll quickly jump over to the, to the uh, floor plan if I can get this to work the way I need it to. So again, the need resident. So this is this gives you a good perspective of that first floor, the parking spaces, uh, which also includes some golf cart spaces and some bicycle parking. Um, you can see on the upper right hand side there uh, along Douglas, the access point to it. Um, again, 118 spaces uh, for use by hotel guests and the public when, when spaces are available. first floor so this is really that first floor that um, that includes all of those activity spaces like the um, uh, I'm sorry I must that thing jumped on me hold on one second that first yeah, it ju yeah it jumped a little on me the, the file size is a little large so it's taking some time to load It's just taking, taking its time to load is my guess. Thank you, Justin. Okay, so back at it. The first floor, um, again, with the, you see the porte cochere oriented towards Douglas, um, the garage entry along one row. Um, you can see the restaurant space uh, near the trail and Main Street. Uh, the, um, 
Retail space is basically positioned at the corner of Douglas and Main. And you can see the fitness spa is basically positioned there at the corner of Monroe and Douglas Avenue. And then the meeting space is, if you look kind of center to the trail, it's that space with the, with the round holes, if you will, the donut holes, which are representing the tables that would be available in that meeting space. There are a few, again, again, units on this floor, but the majority of the units are obviously positioned here on the second floor. And again, you're kind of looking at that E shape of the building and those two holes, if you will, against the trail or those two open courtyards that, that we've been referring to. This is the third floor. And you can see the, um, the roof patio uh, off by the Pinellas Trail on Main Street. It opens up to the trail on Main Street. That, that's a two-story aspect. And then the balance of it is the third floor with, most, with primarily transient units. And then finally, the bar patio on the roof deck if you if you can follow that dashed line that's what separates the a from the c streets and you can see that they have positioned the, the patio and, and bar on the c street and that's where they'll be requesting that additional height of 42 and a half feet this is just some of the materials that the architecture review committee received when the applicants were before them includes the materials board and again, some of the renderings. And I, I'm going to kind of step back and allow the applicant to talk a little bit more about the architectural style and how they, and the concept that they've uh, developed to move it forward. But these are, again, some of those renderings. And finally, this is from Monroe Street. And there's kind of the longer version. These are really. Bottom one being the trail elevation and then the Douglas elevation on the top. This is that green space plan that I talked about that was also endorsed by the Architecture Review Committee. You can see some of the shade trees and ornamental trees that are being proposed. And again, just a palette of some of the concepts that may be developed as part of that overall green space plan. Again, a second. Um, so moving again back through the approval standards, uh, we are on sustainability. The, the mixed-use development projects are required, as, as the board knows, to achieve a minimum score of 100 of 320 points available utilizing the, the sustainability matrix. Uh, in this case, the applicants have uh, achieved a pre-development score of 146 points, so they meet that, um, that threshold, and that has been certified by uh, Natalie Gass, our sustainability coordinator. Um, from a sign regulation standpoint, most of this is obviously conceptual and hypothetical at this point, um, um, and what you're seeing in the proposed renderings is for illustrative purposes mostly, uh, but obviously sign permits would be required for any new installation and would be part of that infrastructure review. From a public art standpoint, um, the public art enhancement is required for this project for no less than half a percent of the total project cost. Um, the applicant intends to satisfy that art requirement by commissioning integrated artwork into the project. Um, and in the narrative that's provided in the backup as Exhibit P, you can see some of the language that um, they have um, presented as part of that. Um, we are proposing a landscape sculpture near the corner of Main Street and the Pinellas Trail, sculptural metal bike racks on either side of the entrance on Douglas Avenue, a decorative water feature separating the Portica Share from Douglas Avenue, a decorative fountain in the southern courtyard, a tile mural on the Mon Monroe Street facing side of the building at the corner of Monroe Street and Douglas Avenue, and a tile water light feature on the third floor wall that separates the restaurant patio from the interior space. Um, as you would suspect, a public art application would be required during infrastructure review to make sure all of that, that, that occurs. Um, there is no parkland impact fee for this project. Uh, it's not required for transient units. Um, with respect to the citizen participation plan, um, the proposed project is not a commercial or institutional project abutting residentially zoned property, so it wasn't required. However, the applicant did uh, actually take a number of steps towards um, um, 
um, in, including all citizen uh, groups that they could possibly include. And you'll, they actually have an exhibit in the backup exhibit Q, which shows the groups that they met with. They've met with Preserve the Vibe. They've met with the uh, uh, Downtown Merchants Association. Um, and again, uh, they've had a two, not, not one, but two uh, meetings with the Architectural Review Committee. So uh, they, they have really done their due diligence on an outreach, from an outreach perspective. On the traffic impact side, um, the applicant has provided a traffic impact analysis that includes the existing and proposed daily peak hour trip counts. Uh, the analysis includes a level of service of the existing roadways and the impact of the project on those roadways. Uh, and that's all available in Exhibit R in your backup. Uh, the report includes quantifying trip reduction measures that include a hotel shuttle service providing approximately 10 golf carts for guests, providing uh, free bikes for guest use, and discounting the valet parking rate uh, for those using alternative modes other than their car. So that is factored in a little bit into that traffic impact study. Uh, the initial TIS uh, traffic impact study has been peer-reviewed by our traffic engineer who's actually here tonight. So if you have questions of, of our traffic engineer, he is also available this evening. Um, there are some suggestions for improving the TIS that the applicant is committed to working through during infrastructure review. Uh, on the mobility side, uh, development projects that generate more than 300 new peak hour trips are designated as Tier 2, and development projects that generate more than 50 new peak hour trips are non-deficient roads shall be reviewed by the city's traffic engineer to determine if the impacts of the project adversely affect the level of service of the surrounding road network. Um, since the city does not currently have a traffic engineer on staff, city staff will engage a consulting engineer such as, such as uh, Mr. Dabkowski um, to help us with that infrastructure review for this project to determine those impacts. Um, as noted previously, the applicant further intends to offer those offsetting improvements, so that would be factored in as part of that overall review. Finally, on the level of service side, um, Chapter 106 of the Land Development Code requires that public facilities be available concurrent with impacts from development. Um, this has obviously been circulated through the design review process to other agencies within the city, and those wastewater, potable water, solid waste, and stormwater issues have all been um, um, deemed appropriate by those, those appropriate agencies. From a plotting perspective, no further subdivision of the land is proposed, so there is no plotting that is required. Um, you heard from Bob with respect to the fiscal impact, and Bob's still here if we have additional questions at the end. Um, so as we, um, th the other thing I wanted to point out before we get into committee actions is that there, were, there have been some previous actions on this site, as the board's, as the board's probably well aware. Uh, in November 1 of 2018, the City Commission unanimously approved a design review uh, authorizing the development of a project called Courtyard on Main 2. Um, that mixed-use development included 18 residential condominiums, about 29,000 square feet of commercial, retail, and restaurant space, and 20,000-plus square feet of existing office space, parking, and uh, about 8,000 square feet of courtyard space. So what's important to note here is that approval and related development order is still active and valid. Um, so un until something else comes along, that development order still exists, and that approval for Courtyard on Main 2 is still there. Um, so attached to the, the uh, so the, the meeting minutes for that Courtyard on Main exercise, uh, uh, both the LPA and City Commission meetings are also included in your backup as exhibits in case you need to, in case you want to refer to those as well. Uh, and I do have some renderings of Courtyard on Main too, if that's something that you want to see. Um, in the committee actions, um, as mentioned, the Development Review Committee uh, reviewed the application on April 7th, 2021. Uh, all of those comments have been addressed and or, or would be addressed as part of the infrastructure review and as recommended in, in the staff's recommendation at the end of this report. The Architectural Review Committee has met twice, um, informally on June 1 of 2021 to provide feedback, and then again formally on August 3, 2021. And at that August meeting, the ARC did unanimously recommend approval of the proposed Mediterranean architectural style, <clears throat> um, subject to a few conditions and comments which have since been addressed by the applicant. The Community Re Redevelopment Agency, as Bob indicated, also considered this uh, proposal on July 15th, and you heard Bob's comments with respect to that. 
they found the project to be consistent with that downtown master plan and their downtown vision. So finally, kind of bringing this home, staff determination and recommendation, <coughs> excuse me, staff finds the following. Um, the request application is consistent with the applicable design review criteria articulated in the land development code. Uh, the applicant is offering improvements to offset impacts that may be created by daily traffic trips, including providing for a shuttle service, providing an internal PSTA bus stop pull-off area, providing access uh, to golf carts and bicycles, and structuring the proposed valet service to incent the use of alternative transportation modes. A mix of land uses exists around the subject site, including office use, retail, and restaurant use, residential use, and recreational and park use. The applicant is requesting an LPA recommendation and city commission approval for additional height only as it relates to that portion of the Douglas Avenue parcel C Street uh, around the rooftop pool and patio at a height not to exceed 42 and a half feet. Uh, the applicant is also requesting the LPA consider uh, waiving the 10 foot step back requirement above the second story and instead approving their alternative design which includes those intermittent step backs and articulation of the building facade. The ARC has recommended approval of the architectural style pursuant to their two previous reviews. Accordingly, staff recommendation uh, to the LPA is to recommend approval of application DR21-09 subject to the following. Number one, that the applicant is responsible for meeting the minimum criteria of the land development code and for acquiring all other jurisdictional permits and approvals. Number two, that construction plans shall be consistent with the approved design review plans as you see them here before you this evening. Number three, the design review approval shall expire in 12 months from the date of city commission design review approval unless the applicant attains infrastructure review and approval and vertical building permits. Number four, permitting a maximum building height of 42 and a half feet to accommodate the rooftop pool and patio and is limited to only that portion of the Douglas Avenue parcel as shown. Number five is to accept the applicant's request to vary from the required 10 foot step back in favor of the alternative design presented and including intermittent horizontal step backs and articulation fenestration of the building facade. Number six, the applicant will design and fund the movement of the current traffic signal cabinet to the southeast corner of Maine and Douglas, if feasible, or an alternative location deemed reasonable by the developer, county, and city. And I, I failed to mention that as part of the staff report, but there's an existing signal box on the property now that um, there's been some discussion about relocating that to another space. Uh, number seven, the public shall have access to all spaces noted by the application, including access to the open air courtyards and parking as may be available. Um, trail connections, if contemplated, shall be authorized by the county and provided to the city. Um, number nine is, a, a, is, is actually an error. That's a repeat of number, of number six. It talks about the signal box again. And then finally, number 10, which would be now number nine, any work to be completed within the right of way, i.e. the median removal that Bob had mentioned, has to be, should be reviewed, shall be reviewed and approved by the appropriate re regulating authorities. So with all of that, um, certainly happy to answer any questions. Again, I have Jerry here if you have transportation questions. And I always have Joey here for any historical <laughs> kinds of things that you might have questions on as well. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Are there any questions? Yeah, I want to start out with the parking. I feel that there's a real issue with that. Um, <clears throat> my thought process is that there's 89 transient hotel condo units. More than likely, there's going to be 89 cars at least for those transient and or condo people. That only leaves like 29 parking places left. So out of that 29, you've got a restaurant, you've got retails, you've got a gym. It's not enough parking to sustain those uh, for those people going to those the retail or the restaurants it's just where where are those people going to park I, I don't I'm not understanding that eventually yeah we'll have a parking garage but that's just eventually I'm I'm just trying to all, I mean all I can the the count required is, is point eight as you mentioned so from a from a, a strict interpretation of land development code, they, they meet the minimum threshold required where they would park. Um, I would assume a lot of people using the spa and or the retail space would be parked maybe in other locations and walking to this facility. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if this is going to be... There's really no street parking around there, though. That's the thing. The, the future garage? 
No, the one underneath the uh, um, nature's nature's food patch, correct? Possibly. As a parking garage there. That's that's pretty much utilized. Eighty percent right now, on a regular basis, the parking garage. Do you know, Bob? Every every time I've been in there. It, or it seems like lately it's getting harder and harder to find a spot in that garage. It's during the day. I haven't seen it. Well, I haven't seen it. Uh, I've seen it maybe on a. I've seen it maybe on a peak time. You know, Friday. So during the day, I've been in there. Even on a Wednesday night, I haven't seen it used as much. Well, no, uh, uh, probably not during the day. I don't yeah. come down a lot during the day. It's more like everybody else during peak times. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly sure. Sometimes it's that capacity. I'm. I'm I am seeing some, uh, definitely uh, some parking availability in there too, though. I see okay. both. So, but I understand. I think it's a good point. But by, by both you gentlemen, I mean, are they going to have anything maybe at the entrance of the parking saying, "Hey, there's this many spots left," you know, so people aren't going on there, turning around, then have to leave, then go to the other parking lot, turn around, and have to leave. I just it, I, yeah. that's what drives people crazy. It's valet. Okay, so anyway, what is that lay? You're right. It's You're gonna know right away. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So is the valet designed to drop off on Douglas and then they'll move your car yeah. in Monroe? Or will you be val will your valet meet you on Monroe? I was gonna say I defer to the my assumption would be as the car's pulling into the Porta Cachere, then they're picked up by the valet and then moved over into the And park. brought back yeah. to the Porta Cachere. How many spots approximately are there right now, Bob, between the Ocean Optics building and Main Street? Is there 100 spots there? Currently, what's in play today, uh, I would say more in the 55, 60 range. Is, you know, we, we lease 41 in the front, but as you mentioned, there's some on the side and also on the rear. Right. I, I'm just estimating somewhere around 60 spots, I'm thinking. Something along those so lines. So with the valet parking, so as the valet sees that it's filling up, Will the valet then go park at the other parking garage? <laughs> Don't know. I'll have to defer to the I, developer. I think that would only make sense. Yeah. Ask the developer. Applicant. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, well, you know. To, to oh, no, sorry. No more valet tonight. We're full. To, to kind of counter that, they're, they're not asking for any variances on parking spaces right. required, right? So there's really, it's kind of a mute it's point. Right. And and so, I mean, they're meeting everything like the red. I can't find the chart. I was looking no, for it, and yeah. it's no, 100 tabs it just open doesn't. here. Hold up to it. And I understand where you're coming from. Code compared okay. to market, I guess, is kind yeah, of what you're yeah, right. yeah. 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 Uh, understand. Reality. My, my question here goes, George? Okay. Um, we have a um, compatibility requirement that you uh, acknowledged. I'm trying to find it now. Where, where did you? Exhibit would be uh, Exhibit N. Okay, no, it's sorry, it's on your your page six of uh, fourteen of your um, staff report. Um, six, uh, V V one six. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. compatibility analysis. Okay, you've acknowledged uh, that this project meets everything that's been outlined in this objective two point nine. So what, I think what we're saying... And you've also said in your staff, the last second to the last page, you've said this requested application is consistent with all applicable design review criteria articulated in the city and land development code. So you've basically said this project meets everything except the C Street height requirement, okay, which is what they're asking for. It's a request for that. They're asking for the setback, two requests, so that's a second request, okay? And I think they're asking for uh, something different on the sidewalk on Main Street. So that's what they're asking for. You staff has basically said, this project meets all of our criteria. It meets uh, objective O 2.9 or whatever we're calling that now. So what we're so the design criteria actually starts on page seven. What yes. we're saying is from 
uh, seven A through. I'm talking in general, compatibility in general of right. everything. So I, I think what we're saying with the, with respect to compatibility is we have an existing um, project that's approved for the site that stands at three stories. There's an existing uh, structure on the site that stands at three stories. In essence, uh, and the applicants, I'm sure, will talk about a little bit more. They've also done a little look. They've done a look around the area and provided some additional structure heights. I think they. Uh, actually show measurements to the top of parapet right. or whatever. Um, so from that perspective, we believe it's compatible. And for the mo actually the building steps down to two stories in some in all portions of it. So you're really looking at a two story, three story, and then that portion that you mentioned would be the ask. So that small portion right where the on deck is. the C Street, right. Monroe. Right. Okay. So I mean they're asking for that item plus two others. Other than that, everything else, the parking issue, they've met the requirements. Yeah. Okay. Everything else, they've met the requirements. That's correct. The, the uh, coverage on the land, they've met that requirement. So there, there are no issues really at this point with what they have in front of us other than our personal opinions of what they've done to this project. Okay. The staff is basically saying this, is, this project is good to go, but we have these three items that we need to give a blessing or a denial as a recommendation to the commission. I, I think that's fair. I think that's what, where we're at right now. I, I think that's fair. We're saying all the design, we believe all the design review criteria met and those want, optional items are. I just want to hear you say yeah. that because we've made a big deal out of this objective O and, and you know, we got a little lecture uh, last month and a, <laughs> And something on an email that, you know, just in case we didn't get the lecture, all of the things that we need to look at, that we're required to look at. And we've done that. I've done that, I know for sure. And staff, by everything that I've read here, has done that also. We certainly have, based on the information that's been provided by the developer. Okay. All right. I, I have questions of, of, the, of the applicant when he has an opportunity, okay? But that was the biggest one I had for you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Macero. Are there any other questions of staff? No? Okay. Can we have the applicant come forward, please? Let me go get him, George. No problem. It's going to be a second, I think. That's okay. Picture, that looks so nice of the city hall. And those lights looks really neat. Hello, it's nice to see you all today. <laughs> I'm Jim Graham, I live at 12, 1231 Royal Oak Drive, Dunedin, and I'm uh, representing the client on this, the uh, Founders Hosp Hospitality, LLC. And uh, I'd like to present a little bit, some of the pictures you may have seen before, but I would like to talk you through how, how some of the uh, uh, discuss discussions you had and some of the other issues that you've brought up. And I'd also like to show you what our plan is for this project. Can this I is, ask you a question first? Sure. Uh, would you like us to hold any questions as you're progressing through here to the very end? It, or do you want us to interrupt you and ask? It doesn't bother me either way. Okay. So, so it works out okay. I also have the owners here and I have the architects here so that if there are any questions that you need to ask them, that you could ask them as well. Uh, what I'd like you first to do is this is, uh, it was originally called Dunedin Residence, now it's Sterling. And um, let me see if I got this. I know you we talked about the uh, parking garage, and I, I brought this up because I wanted you to see 
Uh, the parking garage we've got down in the lower right-hand corner, that's where we have the, uh, the electric charging stations for, for the cars. And then scattered out through there, there are uh, places for bicycle parking and for golf cart parking. Uh, what, with, what they want to do, and it was explained to you by George that the uh, golf cart parking's there so that when somebody comes to this site, they don't use their car. They park their car, valet park their car down there, and they use the golf carts, or they use bicycles, or they use the, the bus, or they use other modes of transportation. The whole idea is to keep them here and not have them out driving around. That's why they're proposing incentive. Uh, they're charging for the parking, the valet, the valet, valet service and the parking, but they'll cut that price 50% if the car stays in the parking garage. If they take it out, it'll cost them. So that's the whole idea about having that parking downstairs. And it's all valet parking. And if somebody comes that wants to shop, they can valet park there too. There's a fee for that, but they'll, they're more than likely be reimbursed by the retail or the restaurant or whatever that they go to. So that's how that's, that's proposed to work. But you can ask the owners a little bit more about that if you need to. But the circulation of the valet parking, as I drop my car off in the porta cache the valet guy or gal, whichever, uh, drives your car out down on Monroe and goes down into the garage. That's right. And when you want to pick up your car, you go to the valet and you ask them, or you call down and say, pick, I'm going to want to pick my car up at 2, two o'clock this afternoon. And they bring it back they up. They bring it back and have sure. it sitting there for you, just like you would in any other hotel. Okay. That's, the way they, that's the way they work. And they'll maintain and, and keep track of how many cars are down there so they know whether it's full or empty. So if somebody comes in off the street and wants to park there and it's full, it's full. So they can't, they can't valet at that time. So, but that's something they'll have to coordinate and work out as they go through this process. The um, next slide is the first floor. Let me get this thing. Okay, I'm going the wrong way. The next slide is the, actually the ground floor and site plan. And, and I've marked up a few things just, just for your edification. Uh, some of the things that you'll see is those two red uh, lines up there on top is those are the areas that we're planning on having access to the trail. And, of course, we'll work with the city and the county in order to see if we can get those access provided. It has to go through the city and the county. We can't actually do it ourselves. And those two access points to the trails, I know George talked to you about the courtyards. Those are set there to align with the courtyards. And I know there's some trees, there's some memorial trees there, and of course we'll work around those memorial trees to make sure that they're not damaged. And that will give us access to the, directly to the courtyards. The whole ground floor, with the exception of a small area where there's some hotel units, is open to the public. So anybody can come in, wander around at any time. There's staff there, there'll be you know, guards walking around like they would in any hotel. And so actually that whole ground floor is open to the public. So everybody can come in. And we want to have them come in because there are services and there's the restaurant and there's, there's the, the uh, spa and there's some other things in there that people may want to enjoy. As we move around on the uh, top side is the trail. The left side, of course, is Main Street, right side's Monroe, and the bottom is Douglas. Uh, what we've done is we talked about the artwork. Uh, I've located some of those spaces. You can see the red. There's artwork on almost every corner. Uh, the artwork is, is something that's going to be planned in and it will be within the, covered by that 0.5% that's required. And so we've, we've allocated the corners. We've also allocated the fountain, which is down there in the middle of Douglas on the bottom of the plan. There's a fountain there. There's, there's plans for artwork in there. There's also plans for artwork in the courtyards. Uh, and you can see it, it's smaller writing, but I didn't redline those, but there's a fountain in one of the courtyards and there's going to be artwork in those. So the, the, the idea is that we want to spread that around the building as much as we can so, it, so everybody gets a chance to see some of that. Some of it will be tile work, some of it might be freestanding art. We talked about a sculpture at the corner of uh, the trail and Main Street. And um, so that, those are the kinds of things we want to have. The thing that's important on this, on this project, you see those, how dark shading there is around the edges of the building on the trail and, and Main Street and then also on Douglas? Well, those are covered porches, covered areas. Those are, those are not 
part of the, the sidewalk. Those are actually open covered, area. open, covered areas. Okay. So you can wander down those, and those range between about 8 feet to 15 feet in depth, depending on where you are along that. So you have that along with the sidewalks. As long as you're on the arcade, can I ask a question about yes. that? Okay, so I'll, let's talk about Main Street from the trail on down. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that corner space is identified as a restaurant, okay? Yeah. And it has a very big arcade off on the trail side, and that's all open air space. Now, the arcade space... Uh, Coming down Main Street, can I walk from storefront to storefront and going through that arcade all the way through? Yes, you, you may. You don't have walls that separate. No. It's, it's hard to tell. that you got a dark wall. It's hard wall. to tell, but you'll see on some of the pictures. Well, some, they stop, okay? Yeah. Like when it gets to the very corner down toward Douglas, uh, it no longer continues. At the retail area... Right, right down there on Main Street, that's the entrance to the retail area and does stop at that point. There'll be a door there to go into the retail shop at that but point. I can walk in that arcade all the way along that glass line, undercover. Yes. Undercover. All the way to the trail, but I can't walk to the corner of Douglas because of the way that you've got that designed. That's correct. Okay. If, if you remember, and, and, I, I'm, and I don't mean to be critical here, Courtyard on Main, did a great design concept, and you may have been responsible for it, by exposing that very corner of Douglas and Main Street, which you all have done kind well, of What a we did on the, a, a, job the, with the first one is that, that that was part of our courtyard. We put it out there. Yeah, and, right. And had outdoor dining out right. in that area. And I see where in you this case, moved it. And that's in this case... In this case, we don't. What we've done, and we still, we're, we're still taking, you know, I'm still concerned, we're still concerned about that access to the park and the visibility along that side. And so what we've done is, is we've changed the setbacks, the setbacks along Main Street. You know, the code says you can go from 0 to 12 feet right. as your setbacks. Well, what we have along Main Street is our setbacks are 7.4 where the trail is, Plus that Inside covered, our covered area, area. Right. plus that covered area, which is another 10 to 15 feet, to 14 feet 3 inches down on, on the corner of Douglas and Main. So we've, we've pulled that back quite a bit, and that's so we're asking for that slight variance, that 2 foot point three feet of variance of that location. But what that does is that that's to the property line. Now, if you go to the street, the setback changes from um, from about 9.4 feet to 18.4 feet to the curb. So the building actually where you're talking about where there's that part of the retail that sticks out, it's still 18.4 feet from the curb at that corner. So it does step back. And we did that. So we could address some of the access to the to the park, and also most of the buildings around that, like Skips sets back, the church sets back a little bit, and so we're trying to set open up that whole corner as much as possible. And we did that also on the Douglas side. That side's pulled back a little bit more than the rest of the building. Oh, you did a good job on the Douglas side. I mean, um, I have no issues with that. I just was when I saw that. The arcade thing concerned me because I wanted to make sure I could see all the way down that arcade under cover. Mm -hmm. And I was disturbed with the fact that the arcade does not continue up all the way through that retail space toward Douglas. That was my biggest concern. Okay. Well, that's, that's something that's we, just can, my we opinion. can think about. Well, so. My opinion. Well, yeah. Along the same line, though, if, yes. if we go back to the courtyard, there was 38 feet from the curb to the building. Yeah, it was 38 feet plus we had outdoor dining. Now, I notice here at that corner of Douglas and Main, you've got a hard corner of the building and two arches, right? Yes. So we could pull that corner back and just have one big arch that would give you probably at least 10 more feet at that location. That's a possibility. That's something that could be investigated. But um, just, I think, You're squared I think off that side of the building uh, diagonally to the... 
to the, mm -hmm. to the corner. Well, we think that that's a very important portion of the building. I think you can see that in the rendering, how there's a, op that's all open. I understand. Above, it looks good. Open decks. But if it just if it you really if you want more corner. space out there, you would cut the corner off and make it just one arch. That's just a suggestion. Okay. Well, and, you know, as we talk about the arcade thing, and that the arcade is neat. Okay, I really love what you did. But still, the building beyond the arcade, out as it moves toward the street, is is you know a tower. Now you've met the requirements, the setbacks, but you still have that wall above that arcade that kind of puts us in that Main Street Valley, okay? But this is allowable by our code, and, and, and we all said this was okay. And we're working with it, trying to... And, and you're working to get with it. it. If you it's, just it's, do a little better job on that corner... It's a you, little, you, little tight site. That yeah, you know, really tough. I mean, as big as it is... It's I was just wondering what site. else you could get in on that site. I mean, you <laughs> really <laughs> used it up quite well. But the thing, the thing about... Uh, also along Main Street, you know, we've we've added some landscaping and trees. So we, within that sidewalk area, we've we've got the, that that uh, additional landscaping that the city's to trying to improve all the way to soften it yeah. somewhat. And as you go to uh, on the Douglas Avenue, I'm glad you like that side. The uh, <laughs> the building sits back about two and a half feet to about four and a half feet, and and it varies quite a bit along that side. You'll notice that what we've done is that we've coordinated, after some of the meetings we've had, what, what we did is we coordinated with the city and we, and we talked to staff and the concerns that were brought up at those meetings like loading, unloading, where's the bus gonna go, those kinds of things. So what we've done is we've located the bus stop right in the middle, middle of the of this block <clears throat> so it has good access to, to the hotel and also to downtown Dunedin. And then we put two loading zones in there near the front where the retail and the restaurant's going to be so that we have a, a good place for uh, loading and unloading. You said two, I only see one load. It's one, it's actually double. It's, it's size oh. of a double. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. it's, it's size so that it meets the city requirements for two loading zones. Yeah. Um, also along that side, you know, we've maintained, in, in doing this, we tried to maintain a nine foot sidewalk all the way down the Douglas side. And um, it goes out to about 19 feet by the time it gets to the curb where the landscaped areas are. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've had to adjust that, and we, we got, did that by taking some of the, you know, taking the islands out, which were about five and a half or six feet, working with the road and working with the project and pushing the building, and in order to get that minimum nine-foot sidewalk we felt we needed to have all the way along Douglas. Are we, we still looking at arcades there? Yes, there's up? arcades on that side. That, that run Toward again the from the retail, that little retail access the door. To the driveway. To the driveway. Yep. Yeah. And, and down there by the spa, it looks like that's just a push, a setback. Yeah, down there by the spa, it's just a setback. It's just landscaped down yeah. there. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just, and just, just so, so you know, so you can under, understand, at uh, Casatinas, it's nine feet from the building to the back of the curb. And at Cafe Al Fresco, it's 9.6 feet. I went out and measured them. So you, it gives you an idea of what the sidewalks are. You know, we're, we're increasing the sidewalks pretty substantially along Main Street. And also, uh, we're increasing the area along Douglas so that it meets that. You had, were saying earlier, or, or I'm sorry, George was saying earlier, how that the way we're getting away from that 10-foot setback at the first uh, story uh, was the variation in buildings. Can you show us that? Yes, I'll get to that okay. as, as we move through. This next slide is the landscape slide, which you already saw. I just wanted to let you know we've all already talked to the city arborist, and we've worked with that. We met on site. And so our, our landscape architect understands what the city requirements are, and we'll proceed with that. You can see the trees. We're using canopy trees and decorative trees around the site, primarily canopy along Main Street, and a mixture between the decorative trees and the canopy trees along Douglas. There's an underground uh, power line that runs through there, so we have to be very careful as we're working in those areas. Come on. There it goes. Okay, this is the second floor, which you've already seen. And as I told you, the first floor is all public, well, the second floor is private. It has the, ho the hotel units. And then the third floor, come on. Go this way.
Yeah. All right, just Long erased way. it. <laughs> well, what, what I was going to say is the... Uh, here's, our, here's our guide, if I could. Okay. The third floor, which you've already seen, has that uh, open patio on the uh, southwest corner that overlooks the, the, the uh, main street and the trail. And on the, on the roof plan, if you remember, uh, what I wanted to, to talk to you about was that the roof plan, the, the pool, the front half, most of the building is 36 feet. There's a section where there's the pool deck area. That's 42 feet, 42.5 feet. But there's the elevator core that comes up to bring people up. And what they've done is they've taken the pool deck area, and there's another lower deck area that's down at 36 feet, and the bathrooms and the storage for the pool is off of that. So the height of those portions of the building are um, 40, 46 feet and 48 feet. Mm -hmm. So it's higher than the 42.5 feet, just for those small portions of the building in that general area. But they're kind of centered in the building. They're centered right back there. in the building. Yeah. There it is, right yeah, there. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's the one I want. We'll go to the next one, because we've already talked about this. Not liking it. Struggling. Okay. See, even our IT guy says the project's very large. <laughs> I reduced it <laughs> from what they had. Okay. But anyway, that rooftop area, that's so, it, you just like to explain the, there's an A street on one side, the, B, the C street's on the other side moved everything into the middle of the building so it can't be seen from the street. And I've got some pictures on there that show you can't see it from the street. So the whole idea is that that's kind of invisible up there, if you will. Mm -hmm. but, but the height is, as opposed to the 42.5 feet, the roofs are, like I said, 46 and 48 feet to the roofs of those bathrooms. And we have to have the bathrooms up there. The, uh, whoops. Thank you. Um, Sorry, going to do it again. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I, I, is that uh, over the, yeah, over in the corner above the restaurant, that rooftop Excuse me? bar there? Yeah, that's a, that's a rooftop deck. It can Open be deck. used for people that want to go up there and have, have take dinner up so there it or could, whatever. It could be a private vendor It could there. be a private vendor up there. Uh-huh. Like some needs. local saloon might want to be, uh, be there. Well, that, that's, uh, I'd let the owner answer that. Yeah, okay, I'm just... But, um, uh, no, that's a, that's a deck up there for the public, yeah. and if you want to take your meal up there and eat up there, you can, and they, you know, they can serve drinks up there if you need to, but they would have to come from the restaurant downstairs. Okay, then the deck up above... There's also the an area for a, a there's small... There's a bar there. Yeah, now, there is there's that, a small area, yes. Is the pool area and that... that Bar there is that a private area just for the, the pools open to the public? Open to the public, right? So that little bar area right there could too. be open. Could be open to the public as well. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm getting way ahead of you. That's okay. There. Yeah. This is this is what I was saying. The yeah, you've got the pool area, which is the one on the lower portion that's shaded in, and that's the 42.5 feet. The other area, that's the deck area, is down below, and that's 36 feet. And then the, uh, the bathrooms and the uh, outdoor covered area is the 46 to 48 feet in height. So those are the actual heights that we'll have in those areas. And they're just a small portion of the roof area. Mm -hmm. The remaining back side of the roof on, on the north side is still 36 feet, so it's still the three floors. <clears throat> okay, this is, this is uh, what we put together. We, we had, um, we had this, a surveyor go out and survey the buildings in the downtown area to find out what the heights they are. And so what, I did, what we did was put this together, and I, just a few of them I wanted to point out. Uh, one is the one on the upper right-hand corner. Uh, that one is Victoria Place. Uh, that one's at 46.8 feet in height. 200 Main Street. Yeah, 200 Main Street. Mm -hmm. and, and over in the far right-hand corner, right side over here, 
Uh, that is the artisan, and that's 37.6 feet in height in that one. Uh, the other one down here is the gateway, and the gateway is scheduled to be at 46 feet. The other ones are different things. The 41.46 feet is a residence that sits, sits over um, Pisces. Pisces, yeah. And then there's a few other ones on there that just give you a sense of what the heights are around town that have been approved already. And, and so this is not an isolated project in the downtown core area on those particular streets, the A's and C streets. Okay. The fact that it's in the middle, I mean, really helps. To it's in the middle, yeah. Mm -hmm. This next one. I should, should sit over here and do it. Let me try that. <clears throat> do you reset this this way, George? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I need to bring my sleeping bag. <laughs> it's just not doing it. It would be easier for me to sit here and do it than over there. This is the um, material, which you've already, you've already seen. I'm sorry, but this is working this way. The material board is, um, shows you the texture. It goes from a heavy, tex heavy stucco texture to a smooth stucco texture. Colors from white to gray to, to black. Also, we have brick in there. And it's just, I was just going to explain, those are the, the different colors that we have. The next one. Try it without the slideshow. Uh, these are the elevations, and what I was going to talk about on the elevations, uh, this is uh, down Douglas, and what we did with the design is we tried to create a building that looked like it was built over time. So it's got multiple fascias, the, 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 they fit, step in, they step back, They're t some are taller than others and some are shorter, and in most cases there's actually a step back where the uh, decks, out, outdoor decks are, which you, if you can see it in the, th in the uh, when I th show you the rendering, because those will, those will show those porches up there. Right. But a majority of the street has those porches on them. But we also have the step backs and the sh and ups and downs and shifts back and forth. And the whole idea, what the code calls for is a design that would l help offset the canyon effect. We didn't want to have a two-story building that went for the whole block, and then push back 10 feet and have another floor. We wanted to have something that would give some interest, some character downtown, and we wanted to have something that didn't look like it was built all at one time. So that's why you see all the different materials, the different details, just different character as you move through the project. Because you know, you've got the lighter colors on the left side, then you've got some brick, and then you've got some stone, and then you've got some more stucco, and you've got heavy stucco, you've got light stucco. So as you move through the project, it changes as it goes through. So it's, so, so it's just like it's a different building. Some guy built this one building, the brick building there, and then decided somebody else came over and built the one with all the arches in it. And so it's, it's something that they, they really worked hard on trying to make it come together. There we go. And um, this one is a, um, actually this is, the top one is on Main Street. The left side where you see the red, that's the two-story section, and that's over 50% 50, 50 of the face on Main Street's two-story. The right side is the one-story, or it's a three-story area, and there's some decks and patios and things on that, so that breaks it up. The, uh, Can I ask you a sure. question since you're on that elevation? Right there where you show the furthest east two-story section, mm -hmm. you got a brick, brick building, an independent Brick building, okay. What's your in the middle? Yeah, right in the middle. The the where does that one come down on the on the arcade side? It, does it have an arcade? It's got an arcade underneath, underneath it. Also. Right, and then and then the area that's where the three square arches are. That's the area. That's the area that pushes out. out. Right. Right. Okay. 
and right. it's got glass. So you can walk all the way under that until yeah. you get to that point. Even across the brick brick section. Right, okay. even across the brick section. Mm -hmm. And the lower one is Monroe Street. And so we, as we came around Monroe, even though the building sits back somewhat because that's where our dumpster area is, it still has the same character and delineation. And the, the right-hand side is the access to the parking garage, and that ties into the overall character of the entire project. Oops. This, this is the, uh, along the trail, and again, we have the same kind of things, and the lighter colors you see are where the, where the courtyards are. And this one's lost. <laughs> Let me go back one. Well, what this one was going to show <laughs> is the there's an aerial we have that shows Victoria shows the, the building in the downtown area with with uh, skippers and and uh, casatinas, and you can see in the distance you can see Victoria Place and it'll, it'll come up again, and you can see the uh, artisan. I don't know what happened to those. Uh, this is looking down Main Street, and now you can, or looking down Douglas, and now you can see not how wide the sidewalks are on Main Street, and what we did when we have the loading zone there on Douglas, and you can see the uh, landscape area, and then you've got that corner uh, space where it, where it opens up, and then you, you can start to see how the building undulates in and out. And if you look down just past that tower, you can see open decks on that second floor, and, and past that next tower, then what they do is they've got, you've got these various towers and then open decks and then towers and then open decks. So it just breaks up that facade so you eliminate that canyon, that really, that canyon effect that, that the uh, code is asking for. Okay, well, I'll have to. Uh, we got 30 of these renderings to go through. Well, I don't have that many. <laughs> It's not doing it. That's the artist right there. there. You can see it on yours. <laughs> These are just not coming. There we go. Okay, I, I'll skip down to this is the, uh, what's really nice about this shot, this is the corner at the trail in Main Street. Mm -hmm. And that's where the restaurant's going to go. And you can see the open deck area underneath that for the restaurant. And up on top, you can see uh, there's a, you see the little tree up there, there's a patio up there on top. So we've tr they've tried to address the trail and the buildings on Main Street. So the, you've got these one story, or actually there's story and a half buildings on Main Street. And then you have, we started out with a two-story section and then went to a three-story section. I don't know why there's why these are doing that. Doesn't like these big. <laughs> I'm gonna. Well, though. But the whole idea is that, that that's how the, the building breaks itself up. It separates it so that you have, you have a character that allows for, a, you're, you don't have a solid wall with a wall set back. You have, you have more of a breaking front that goes back and forth. The other things that I wanted to talk about were the different courtyards and the, and the art and um, showing some of the art on the trail side. Oh, here we go. You got it back? That wasn't the last bit of work. <clears throat> okay. Well, this is the corner of Douglas and Main, and I, no, that looks like Monroe. Uh, Monroe. I mean Monroe. Excuse me, Monroe down there on the right, and Douglas right there. And again, you can see the the decks uh, up above the second floor. And what I can't show you is the one that showed the living wall. 
which we're, we're proposing. Part of our plan has, a, has a sections of living wall where the actual foliage grows on, up the wall in different areas. It's part of our environmental presentation. That's really too bad. All your preparation, the money you've spent, and then yeah. this happens. That's really, it's unfortunate. He has a whole set of documents that he has marked up, mm -hmm. and that's what he's showing us. That's why they're different from the other ones. All right. Fingers crossed. And you got these little Google Chromebooks that can't handle it. Right. As long as you got that slide up there, yes. can I ask a question? Yes. Um, I see Monroe Street and there's a truck, looks like going behind some trees. Yeah. There's a driveway running that's, back there. Is that the dumpster that's, that's location? That's the dumpster area. That's where we, we agreed with the sanitation department that that's where they wanted the dumpster to be oh, located. Are we going to do like a rollout or are we going to... We're going to roll out. The, the uh, dumpsters, all the trash comes into the garage down below and they're going to truck it up in the garage and, and bring it out to that location. So there's no dumpster Every, location? No dumpster location. Every day they will do that. And so that's, that's already been discussed with sanitation on how that's going to be handled. Yeah. Jim, I don't see any solar panels on this. <laughs> no, uh, what, we, what we thought about because of the, uh, having the pool on the roof, uh, what we looked at that, and we'll still look at the possibility of some solar, but by the time you, you have the pool there and you have all those air conditioning units that are all around, there's not that much left to do that much solar. And um, plus with... The, there was just a concern about having people up there with those uh, reflections from the solar units on the roof. So, but it was something that the owner's willing to look into. It's just not something that we currently have because we meet the, uh, the matrix now with mm -hmm. what they've done and, and we'll continue to do that. I, I thought that all new construction was required to, is this not qualify as that? Well, the, the, um, Say that again, please. Wasn't new construction supposed to, or no, that's city. That's city. City's requiring it. But we looked at it on this, and we had it on the last one, oh. but basically it took up every bit of the roof that wasn't air right. conditioning units. Right. Whereas here we have a, a pool and outdoor area, so that, that eats up a lot of the, the area of the roof. Um, speaking of the pool, I am concerned when you mentioned that, that it's open to the public. How is that going to be regulated? I mean, gee, that's... Well, that's going to be up to the hotel okay. to manage that. Okay. I, whether they become members or how they do that, I don't, I don't okay. really know. But the, the hotel management company will manage the pool. Okay. It's not going to be people just walk in and use it. That's okay. Good. Let's see where we are now. Okay, this was the, uh, like we're, I was talking about, that's the corner on uh, where the courtyard and where the... Um, Trail and Main Street is. Uh, this is looking back again at the corner of Monroe and and Main Street again. You can Douglas. you can see uh, Douglas, excuse me, and you can see the decks now a little bit better on here, and you can see the uh, the pool up on top. And you can see how far the pool area is pushed back from the edge of the roof. We really worked hard on making sure that can't be seen from the ground. Uh, this again is a corner of. Uh, of Monroe and Douglas, and the next one is uh, taken. If you're on a car in the street, this is your view down Douglas. Were uh, those islands see. going to be removed on Douglas? Yes, the, I, the, the islands are being removed. I know they're still shown in this picture because it was an actual photograph that they brought the building into, but the islands are going to be removed, and uh, the bus stop will be down further past those trees, and as you can see here, you can't see anything of that pool deck up there. Uh, this next one is, again, taken from across Monroe at the trail, and you can see the access to the garage. And this is what the garage looks like for the access, and they'll roll out onto that 
uh, driveway when they bring the trash out. These are the courtyards, and we're going to have art in the courtyards along with the one has the fireplace, and the other one has a fountain that's going to be going in there, and you can see some of the artwork located in there. And what I was going to do from here is kind of give you a walk around the, um, the site just to talk about what you see at street level. This is right on the trail, looking back at the drive area, enter, entering into the parking garage. Uh, that's on Monroe Street at the corner, and you can see the offsets. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that brick building, the offset is quite a bit in those locations. Oh, and you can see the different detailing. What's the material around the uh, Dunedin sign on the wall? That's stone. Okay, because I didn't see that on the... Yeah. It, it, that, it is there. It's, it is? Okay. It, yeah, it is there. But that's a stone work, and you can see, and we're even going to introduce detailing in those uh, iron, that iron work on those little uh, decks that stick out there. And this is uh, a closer look up at the, where the restaurant is on the corner where the trail and, and Main Street. And you can see the detail that's being used on this building. There's quite a bit of detail. It really, really does... It does quite a, quite a bit. And uh, we changed the materials between the sidewalk and the under the canopy, if you will. Now, this is just looking down the street. There's one of those uh, living walls, part of the living wall. Mm -hmm. And they've done that. We're, we're doing that several places around the project, and that's part of our design concept to, to introduce that green space into the building. And you can see the offsets again. See, it's, it's three or four feet, so there's quite a bit of offset as you move down there. Uh, that's the entrance uh, exit from the Portica Share. The Portica Share underneath, again, you can see the detailing. That's the fountain and the detailing around all the columns and the arches and the things like that. It really has a lot of detail, a lot of softness, a lot of touchy, touchy feely kind of things where you can actually walk up and touch those. So the car pulls in. Oh, excuse me. Up. Yeah, car pulls in, drops off. It's three lanes wide, so there's plenty of width in there. Uh, car drops off. You leave. The valet takes it. A person could be registering for the night, yep. going to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Or they could be dropping off to go to the restaurant or something like that. And that's where they would pick the cars up. Also in this area is where they have, we have the bicycle racks. They're going to put decorative bicycle racks in there. And we have like three or four places around the site that they're bicycle racks. Uh, this is the fountain. We're going to have some artwork here. And that's the, nine, the thinnest part, the nine-foot wide portion of the sidewalk. And that's where the uh, bus is going to stop. And we also have some iron great work uh, around the entrance to the Portica Share there. This is another view down uh, Douglas along the, um, this is where, where the loading and unloading area is. And, and again, you can see how the building moves in and out. And some parts of it are two stories, some parts of it are three stories. So it just breaks up that canyon solid wall look. This is further down. You can see we've got green space up against the building as well as out on the, the road. Uh, this is the pool deck, and those are the two roof, the roofs I was talking to you about that are 48, higher than the 42.5 feet, but they're 46 and 48 feet. It's too bad those um, lounge chairs couldn't be double duty with uh, solar panels. They look like that. You know? Yeah, pull them. Think about. We can make those solar. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an elevator, I would assume, behind those glass doors. Yeah, there's an elevator right there, and then you go down where that one person is on the other side of the pool. There are steps that take you down to the lower deck, and down there is where the bathrooms are and the storage and all that. And around underneath the pool is where the pump house is underneath, underneath the pool. And um, that's, that's uh, the main entrance to the, to the uh, Portica Share. And again, you can see the detailing here where there's step backs on either side. Mm -hmm. And this, just the one portion pokes, pokes out, so it really breaks up that facade. And I apologize for all the delays and, and, and stop and go part of the presentation. 
Thank you, Jim. But if you have any questions, questions, I have the owners here and I have the architects here that can help you. Uh, if so you have any questions to be. We're calling this the Dunedin Residences. Well, Sterling is what they're calling it now. It was Sterling. submitted as the Dunedin Residence. Um, I, I noticed uh, maybe if the owner's, re owner's going to come up here, I'll ask a question to them. Is the owner going to come up there and speak? Yes. Sure. Anybody have any questions of Jim, though? before he goes away. Thank you, Jim. Jim? Yeah. Jim Roberts? Uh, just very quickly, and this may not be for you to answer, but somebody else <coughs> excuse me, can pick up on it. Could we go back to the site plan that shows the street level from Douglas? I hope. Oh, wow. Just it's working. <laughs> Look, it's working now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a whole other computer. A little more power does amazing things. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. I want to take you back to this. Now, this, whoops, I went the wrong way. Huh. This one. This is the one, I, it, how it fits into the downtown. You can see Skips and Casatinas on the left and Douglas there on the right, mm -hmm. Main Street. And down there, you can see Victoria Place, how it sits, sits in the fabric of the downtown area. And, and the uh, artisan is over there on the right. Mm -hmm. So it just really fits <clears throat> right into that area and it and meets all the requirements and is very similar to those other two buildings. Is that what you wanted to see, Jim? Uh, no. He wants not precisely as the address. I'm working my way there. <laughs> it's catching sometimes. <laughs> okay. Well, we can, yeah. we've been through this enough, we can, can there it is, is that it? Is that it? No, one more. One more? Maybe two. <laughs> Just wait. Okay, can't push it too many times. There, there's two. There you go. Okay, is this close enough? Like <laughs> that, there you go. I won't touch it. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Now, we had a discussion uh, a few minutes ago about the fact that the staff is saying, except for a couple of exceptions mm -hmm. that the city commission will vote on, uh, that this all meets design standards. Yes, sir. And, right? uh, and I understand that. But sometimes when we have a discussion here, we can point out some things that maybe the owner would want to think seriously about before they get into, you know, finally building the project and might improve it, even though it's not really a design issue per se. Um, I agree with Mr. Walensky's comments earlier about the parking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just seems to me that needing to keep those parking spaces available for potential guests as well as current guests is going to keep that parking lot pretty full. And you're going to have staff at this facility. I don't know where they're going to park. And at the restaurants, et cetera. So it seems to me that we, at this point, are making um, a project that's going to create parking issues in the downtown. And when people come from out of town to visit the restaurants or visit the retail or whatever, uh, we're going to be crowding, you know, crowding our streets with that. And I think that should be looked at somehow and work, something worked out about that. Um, now. The issue with this is, I understand how it works, it's going to be valet parking, but when you pull in as a new guest or as someone who's just called for their car so that they can go out to our wonderful golf course or maybe out to Honeymoon Island for the day or whatever, and you're dropping your, you know, you're dropping your car off, for example, uh, the valet is going to have to come back out on Douglas and make a left so, and to go back toward Monroe. Now, we have some parking or some traffic issues farther down Douglas, you know, down where nature's food patch is. At certain times of the day, it is hard to drive through there because of the delivery trucks right. and whatever. Um, and we're going to have, now have valets trying to get across two lines of traffic to make the left on the Douglas. I think that's a potential problem, 
and especially during busy times. Now, are we going to have 24-hour valet service at this? I believe so. Okay, well, again, yeah, the owner can answer that. But I think that that's a real problem that we're beginning, we're beginning to see, because I don't think they're going to come out and go the long way around Main Street and come in, you know, one row from the other side. Um, you know, for a project like this, it is going to have an impact on the streets, and, and as, as good as people might see this for the community, uh, I think we have to look a little bit more at how we're affecting the parking situation, especially in the short term, um, and what happens if indeed that new parking garage doesn't happen. I have every confidence it will, but you never know. And that, that traffic um, conflict coming out, making a left on Douglas, and especially during very busy hours. Yeah, well, one, one of the things <clears throat> is going to be how do they coordinate the deliveries? Now, I know what you have, and I've experienced it too, coming down Douglas in front of Nature's Food Patch. is a delivery truck right out there in the middle of the road. Even though there's supposed to be an area for them to back up into, they don't do that. They park in the road, and it stops all the traffic. In this case, that's one of the concerns that we had, and it was brought up in several of our meetings, and that's why we worked very hard with the city to get two uh, spaces for delivery, and uh, or a space large enough for two trucks. And we located it so that it was on the end of the building where that those deliveries would be mostly uh, made. And so in doing that, I think we've alleviated some of the traffic problems that was that are caused by our neighbors down the street. And, and yes, we will have the valet, but the valet's uh, uh, going to have to make those, those trips one way or the other as he moves in and out to uh, pick up and drop off cars. And they'll have to be somewhat careful. There are times that you can't go down on Main Street without hitting a lot of traffic. And I, and I think it's just something they're going to have to address as they're working with the valets. Okay. Well, I just see it as a potential problem, and they can comment on it when okay. when they come up. Sure. Any other questions of Mr. Graham? Okay. You want to make them for it? I'll wait up there just in case. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Kirk Broadbooks with Founders Hospitality. Um, to address the parking head-on, since that seems to be what everybody's concerned about, uh, one thing, the way you guys are looking at it, you're looking at it as if the hotel is going to be 100% full all the time. And that's not the case. In this market, average occupancy is 75%. So, you know, there's seasonality to it, obviously, during spring training, you're going to be closer to 100%. During the summer, you're much closer to 60%. So, on average, three quarters of the units are going to be full. So three quarters of the 89 units are about 67 stalls full. So then you've got about 55 available. So, you know, on average during the year, there's going to be quite a few stalls available. So will a resident be able to self-park or even someone that lives in Dunedin wants to use the public parking? It will be only valet. It's only valet. You ever been down there on a Friday night in that area with the pedestrian traffic and the vehicle traffic? Yes. And it, I understand it can be busy. And I mean, like any other, other of the businesses in the downtown, we're just going to have to deal with it the best way we can. Uh, in terms of, you know, whether they're going left across Douglas and left on Monroe or right, 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 you know, in general, the valet is going to do exactly what we tell them to do. Yeah. Now, is there going to be a learning curve to which way is the better way to go depending on what day it is and what time of day it is? Absolutely, I'm sure there will be. And I'm sure they're going to learn that. You know, our instruction is generally going to be take the way that has the least impact because it has the least impact. They can cycle cars faster. They get tipped faster. That's the way they're going to want to go anyway is whatever's the fastest, least impact way. You know, if they can't get across Douglas and then across Monroe, to Monroe, 
they're not going to want to go that way. I think you have a beautiful project here, and I have some real specific questions. The architectural, that building is wonderful, and I'm a little bit more concerned on what's going to be inside there. If we have 89 units, is that a timeshare? No. It's fee simple. You can sell it anytime you want. Okay. But those 89 individual units would be for sale to 80. No. 44. Okay. Only half. Well, one less than half. And they would be for sale to the public? Yes. Okay, I guess I misread that then. Yeah, I did too. That's not, that, I don't think that's what it was in our presentation. Maybe I'm, no. anybody else miss? No, I read like you 89 units. 89 yeah. units. There was no split or anything. <clears throat> because I was thinking 89 well, units times there's 300. There's nine on the first floor, 44 on the second floor, yeah. and there's, 36 there's 89 on the total. Okay. Yeah. Right. And are, but 45 of them were keeping. They're not getting sold. We being? We being Founders Hospitality, the ownership group. And rent those as a Hyatt hotel? They will all operate, uh, all the units will operate under the hotel's reservation system with the exception of the time period that the owners of the 44 units that get sold are using them. So, so the 60 days out of the year that those 44 owners elect to use the unit, then they are not in the reservation system. Otherwise, they're in the reservation system. How? So you're, you're not in con total control 100% control of all 89 units. You, you're, you are in total control of, what number did you say, 44? 45. 45, okay. But no, I didn't see that in staffing. All right, they're all managed, so. Yeah, yeah I understand you're managing them all. Correct. But okay. I, I can't buy more than, after 45 people or so buy them, I can't buy any more. Correct. Unless, unless one of buy those from sellers else. want, unless yeah. one of those owners yeah. wants to sell to you. No, no, I think the the idea is great. I, I don't have an issue with it. I understand. How did you, Kirk? How did you find Dunedin? I guess when I read about that that vacation club, if I've called it a Hyatt Vacation Club, would I be would that be the incorrect term? Yes. What would so I should call it a Hyatt Hotel? It's now at this point. You know, we have not finalized with Hyatt, but that is the direction we are trying to go, and it all looks great so far. But yes, it would operate as a branded hotel, and it would be under their reservation system. So to the outside world, it would look like any other hotel. Nice hotel, but any normal hotel. The ownership structure behind it is not going to be apparent to anyone. What do you anticipate your client... I think as we speak, we probably have, this is off the top of my head, 125, maybe to 150 hotel units under construction or scheduled to begin here in Dunedin. That doesn't include this. How, how, did, you, how did you decide on, on Dunedin? What, you know, I've lived here for 40 years, so I can give you 40 years of reasons. What made you want to build this project at, we're going to call it the, the hub of our city? What, I, what, what, what are your thoughts? So the way we found Dunedin, uh, well, one of my partners is a resident here in Dunedin. My other partner lives in Tampa. He's done hospitality his entire career. Marriott actually asked us to take a look at a potential project on, over towards Causeway. And it was a younger guy who was uh, having a little trouble getting it done and we took a look at it. We didn't really like his site. It was a little wonky. And so we passed. And you know, we signed some non-circumvent agreements and all that. So we had to, we couldn't do anything immediately because we said we wouldn't based on those agreements. But in looking at that project, we also looked at the entire market. We really liked the market. We really liked this town. Right. And that very first time we drove through here, we drove by this site and went, wow, that's the best site. That's a better site than this guy's site. And there were a couple others, you know, we liked the one that the gateway is going on as well. Sure. Um, so, you know, we just, that's what you do when you study a market, you look at other sites and- You know, because I've, I've, I've thought about, there's cooking facilities in each unit, right? Correct. Because I know that, you know, I, I live more than just, I can see this project. 
you know, so I know the, the merchants on the east, the west, the north, and the south. So I, you know, if I owned a restaurant or if I owned one of those bars or one of those shops, I would be ecstatic to hear there's 89 potential units coming to town. Well, with the cooking facility, you know, maybe that you know, they're not all going to be flooding into the restaurants and, and out on the sure. town at night. But uh, it's a, I guess I really I have nothing else. I just am curious how you delivered that. You know, you know, when you come in from the south side of town, we have our new stadium. From the east side of town, we have the gateway, which is going to grow one of these days. We have Victoria Place. You know, and this project is going to end up right in the middle of it. And right. a lot of eyes on it. Yes, absolutely, no doubt. Um, the bottom line for us is it's the best site in town in our opinion. So it's, we understand it's high profile, we understand it's main and main, and right next to the Pinellas Trail, which right. was you know, a huge benefit in our mind. So if you're gonna go after the best site, you, know, you, you gotta take on everything else that comes with that, the high profile nature of it. And you know, we did. Even us. I'm sorry? Even us. Absolutely. And even the townsfolk. I mean, you know, I, I don't know that we knew that we didn't have to do a community meeting. We'd have done it anyway because, you know, you, have, you can't do these projects if you don't have the community to buy in to some degree. Right. And you know, there's always going to be some people who don't want it, period, no matter what you say. But you got to do your best to get your feedback. And frankly, those pull-offs there in the bus stop there on Douglas came directly from the community meeting. That was the main issue we spent God, probably 45 minutes on. And so we came back and we rehashed that entire street because it originally was not that way. And you know, so I'm a believer in the community involvement because you, know, you gotta address the concerns as best you can. Right. Yeah, we're a small town, pretty, pretty tight knit. Right, and you know, can we solve them all? No, we can't solve them all. We do our best to solve what we can. You know, and going back to the parking again, and Joey, correct me if I'm uh, wrong on this, but I believe in your code, if you're doing valet only, you can put in, it's essentially an alternate parking plan that allows you to double stack spaces and reduce drive lanes. There's some opportunity there. So, you know, if the parking becomes insufficient, we have the opportunity to do that. So you know, you're relying on the valets to double stack cars, and because it's valet controlled, you don't have to have the drive aisles quite as wide, so you can pack more cars in there. So that's an opportunity, and all, that, all that's required is restriping the parking. That's a fairly easy fix. I know we'd have to submit a plan, and the town would have to approve it. You know, the, 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 yeah, the concept of valet sounds great, but I mean, as recently as today, I had to take my elderly mother to a medical appointment and they valeted there. And I mean, it, 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 it was stacked up and I, I don't know why I can't get that out of my mind because again, on, I said about Friday night downtown and yeah. man, you got valets, it's, it's, they're gonna be a lot younger than I am so that they can run from the, the garage back. But sure. man, that's a, asking, I, I mean, that's a lot of hope that we don't have a traffic issue. There's a lot of pedestrians, there's bicycles, there's families in that area. As the night goes on, it gets a little more rowdy in that area. Agreed, uh, but that staffing addresses a fair amount of that. And you know, when you, we're gonna use a third party valet company. Yeah. And so as part of that, you have service levels that are baked into their agreement. And if they're not hitting those service levels, then they're out and you bring somebody else in who is gonna hit those service levels. And you made a comment about occupancy rate and I understand that, but let's not sell that short of that restaurant that you're gonna to try to put in, mm -hmm. plus those retail shops. Hopefully they don't have, you know, hopefully they're busy all year. You know, Absolutely. We're really coming post COVID, Dunedin is uh, Absolutely. caught on again. And I'm not gonna stand here and try and tell you that during spring training that it's gonna be pretty. You know, it may not be. The bulk of the year, I, I honestly, truly don't think it's going to be as big of an issue. I might be wrong on that, yeah. but I've run the math, and the math looks pretty encouraging. You know, but you know, my understanding is spring training peak time here isn't really pretty for anybody from a traffic and parking. <laughs> I'm a regular there. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, like, I, 
all I can tell you is if our parking is insufficient, then there's, you know, putting in an alternate parking plan with, since we're valet only, there is also the more extreme, uh, you can put in lifts that, you know, lift the car up off the ground and you sure. literally double stack one car underneath the other. Uh, the, the ceiling height of the parking deck, as I understand it, is supposed to have enough clear height for us to be able to do that. Yeah. And obviously you can't do that without valets, but it's, there's a fair amount that we can do if it just isn't working. And you know, it's in our best interest to make the project operate as best as it can possibly operate. Yeah. And I appreciate your honesty. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I, um, you heard me give Jim kind of a, a critical concern of mine about that arcade mm -hmm. walkway, especially in that very first uh, retail store there, uh, the very actually the very first uh, three sets of uh, double doors there uh, is not in part of that arcade area. Um, you've also heard me talk to Jim about the fact that the last project that we fell in love with uh, had a great wide open corner. Are, are you at least willing to maybe have your design team maybe look at some of those uh, concerns? We've mentioned parking. We've, you know, I've mentioned the, some of the architectural detail with Where? with the arcades and the setbacks and and the uh, corner. Douglas and, and Maine. And just so I'm clear on the setbacks, are you wanting the setbacks bigger or are you want well, I'm, I guess, to what code you know, I'm, I, I, I guess I am, I'm in a bad habit now. I saw that courtyard on Maine and it pushed that whole corner uh, back pretty far, even though uh, legally by code you don't have to, but they did that to open up that whole intersection, the view of the park and to help with that canyon effect. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm asking you, are, are you willing to, you know, we're, take a look at the architecture? We're absolutely architectural... willing to take a look at it. Uh, the one question I would have... Uh, now, I've already said, I, I, th I think you've met all the requirements, you know. Uh, would we have to go back through the ARC if we do that? The, the impression I got from the ARC was that if we made substantive changes, we'd have to go back. Well, and is, this, is that the case? Yeah. It's substantive, but I, you know, there's some, probably some wiggle room in there. The corner right there on Main and Main, I don't see how someone wouldn't be able to argue that it's substantive. <clears throat> well, you've heard my, my feelings and opinion. I, what I can tell you is we're happy to talk about it and we're happy to look at it. If it's it, all I can if ask. If it requires that we go back through the IRC, our timeline uh, with the legal things that are in place, we can't. We can't go backwards in time. Well, um, I'm not happy with that response, no, but. Me um, well, we, we have to close on the property. Yeah. And we're. But, you know, the, the city asks us as a board to have a special meeting, and we do it, okay? And we do it in short order we all can make it. Um, if, if there is a solution maybe that you all would look at that, that uh, modifies that corner, uh, let the architectural review board have a special meeting and get a blessing or a rejection. And, and it's just us, is that, we're just. Is that doable? I mean, we, I, we have to look and see what the change was on the reporting I mean, at this point, we're pretty much backed up against the timeline. Mm. That, that's what I understood. Well, well, it's not our fault. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I understand, you know, and I'm, I'm not you know, saying it is. I'm just to be saying on, that's where we be are. To be honest, it's not his fault either. And we can just offer these recommendations, right. and he can yeah, say right. say yeah. that, and right. it's, I, it's his. I am happy to talk to the architects and talk to these guys and see if we can do it. Yeah. And if we can do it, we will try to do it. Okay. Kurt, were you involved with the uh, 
courtyard on Main Street? No. You were not. But you're with the uh, founder, Founders Hospitality, correct? Right. But it lists the owner as this Arliss Construction. They're the current owner of the property. Okay. So that's who you're buying it from. Correct. Okay. And Founders Hospitality, it lists Joe DeLuca as the representative? Correct. He's, a, he's one of the partners? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to have that straight in my mind. Yeah. And he Joe was here. He had some uh, child-rearing duties that uh, <laughs> <laughs> took longer than we thought it was going to take. Okay. No, yeah. just... No, I was just wondering, so just straighten that out. Okay. We'll just go back to my favorite issue again, uh, because quite honestly, I'm not pleased with the answer either. Uh, you say, oh, it's going to be a 70% occupancy. That's what your market shows. But we all know you didn't build for a 70% number. You built for a 100% number. And everything you do is going to be geared toward trying to achieve that ultimately. I mean, that's your business success. So again, we're going to run into parking problems. I don't think, and as you said, you're going to control the policies of the valets. I don't think we're really saying that that parking area is open to the public. Because for the public to want to get in there, especially during busy times of the season, your people are going to take priority, and you're not going to be put in a position of having one of your folks come by, drive up in the evening after being out, and the valet saying, oh, the public's in there, and I can't park your car. I mean, there are things that have to be, you know, have to be worked on here. Um, so it is a problem, and I think you really have to, you really have to look at it and see what your impact on the community is going to be and not make us believe that this is a public resource because it's going to be very minimal if it is. Okay. And okay. We'll, we will look at it in every way we possibly okay. can. Thank you. I, I, will, I will push back a little bit that while, yes, you strive to get maximum occupancy, markets the market occupancy is it is what it is it doesn't move very much because if one hotel has a lot of vacancy they drop their rate and so if there's too much of a difference between your rate and their rate they go there and it brings their occupancy up and it holds yours steady so it's very difficult to get above the market occupancy all right okay i won't argue with you about that but you know we're becoming more of a destination Agreed. Right. I mean, we're, we're in the center of a lot of golf facilities. We've got Honeymoon Island, and there are other attractions. And it's, it's conceivable that we're going to be above 70% during a significant portion of the year. That's just my perception. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other no. questions of Kurt? Hearing none, is there anyone else from your group that would like to come forward to speak to us? No? I don't think so. Okay. Then I'd like to open this up to the public. If there's anyone, Jim, did you want to speak some more? Okay. If there's anyone from the public that would like to speak to this application, please come forward Have as long as you've been sworn in. If not, you can be sworn in when you come up to the dais. Madam Chair, do yes. you do a three minute timer, just so I know? Pardon? Do you do a three-minute yes, timer? three minutes. Yep. Good evening. My name is Mike Parlapiano. Um, I have two residences here. One is uh, on Garden Circle, which is on Beltries, and the other is in, um, up on Edgewater. I've been a resident here for over 16 years. A couple of comments, and to your points on parking, I think some things have been overshadowed. Um, first of all, you've got a delivery spot here that accommodates two trucks, as we stated. I don't know if they're 16 wheelers or 18 wheelers or six wheelers. Let's assume they're six wheelers, they're smaller. If you bring in an 18 wheeler, you've got all the navigation around those corners and with the tight parking and everything else that goes on down there and the foot traffic, 18 wheelers downtown is a problem. You got numerous retail and restaurant establishments in addition to the hotel. 
Um, I've been in the food business for a long, long time. And when you have a retail restaurant, you're taking three, four, sometimes five deliveries per day for perishables, meats, grocery items, et cetera, et cetera. You have a hotel. Hotel has the same issues. They're bringing in linens, they're bringing in other outside materials and so forth. You've got other retail establishments all around the perimeter of this facility. If they have to use those two sparking, parking spots and they're the only ones available, then they're two-wheeling and four-wheeling and buggy-lugging all that material to stock their stores and stock their facilities from that area to both sides of the property and other locations. That's difficult. So that's going to mean that that's, those two trucks accommodations are going to be stretched out for a longer period of time because you really don't have the logistics capability to get from that parking spot to all the other areas within this building. Now let's talk about parking for civilian vehicles. I don't know what the right number is. It's going to go in this parking garage. Everything's been thrown around here, 70% occupancy and all this. But there's somewhere around 100 parking spaces. I think 118 was the max that was given. If you've got 89 units in this building that are going to be occupied at 70%, pick a number. And a lot of those people are going to have two cars. Some may have three. My family uh, is in Palm Harbor. And, and one family member is in the artisan they own there. And I have my home. When we all get together on a Saturday night for dinner, it's five vehicles. So if they're going to have people here visiting, you're going to have more vehicles on top of that. What hasn't been mentioned here is there's a 250-person capacity uh, convention center or reception center or whatever you want to call it. Um, we live at Bell Trees and Edgewater. Uh, the, the Fenway Hotel is there. Uh, come to the Fenway Hotel on a Saturday night when there's a wedding. Cars all over the place, on their lawn, their parking facility is overwhelmed, and the next thing you know, they're up and down the streets. Now we've got a problem. So the, um, the valets who work there close off the two streets alongside the Fenway, and now we have to navigate all around that. In the meantime, you've got strange cars parked in front of your house. Compound that with a Saturday night baseball game. There's no parking at the ballpark, as you know, except for a few cars that get scattered throughout the neighborhood. And all of a sudden, parking on the front lawn has become a cottage industry over there. So this parking situation uh, is very serious. It's a lot more serious, I think, has been addressed here. And when you start compounding some of the things I've mentioned on top of we only have 118 parking spaces, you're looking at a facility here that probably needs in excess of 200 parking spaces within that unit. Now, the, mentioned, uh, the gentleman mentioned um, double parking the cars with a, a lift system. Mr. And I've seen that in operation. Very time consuming. And if you've got a valet who's got five people or five cars backed up and you're, you're jockeying around with that system, especially a, a narrow one like this one's going to require, it's going to also back up into the streets and everyone's going to want to be there at five o'clock to go to dinner or whatever. You're going to have a mess. Excuse so, me, I'm so sorry to interrupt because what you're saying is so important and valuable to those of us and the public and all, but your three minutes is up, and I'm thank sorry, <laughs> but thank, thank you. you so much for coming forward. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to come and speak for only three minutes? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Members of the board. I, I guess I, I still can't get my head around Reading, I got the, the city, I got it open right here, not permit an individual corporation or an entity to own more than 5% of the total units, except when it's being during the development. I don't know, am I the only one that thought that this was all 89 units would be part of a rental agreement rather than individual hotels? Yeah. No, I, I read it that way too, 89, all 89. And okay. every time it said it said hotel slash condo. Right. Yep. And referred us back to that ordinance. Right. Yes. Yep. It would, and uh, it's open, I have it open right here. Yep. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. This is something the city staff can, yeah, can you? If I might, just, just to be clear. Um, so the underlying language dictates the density. 
it, it looks at it as a transient unit. It doesn't care about the form of ownership. Form of ownership is irrelevant to what the land development code is, is, is saying. As long as it's a transient unit, it's, it's that density, that transient density that applies to allow the number of units. 89 is the number of units permitted through the land development code with this particular request. The form of ownership for staff or for land development code purposes is not relevant. So that's why you didn't see a distinction in the staff report. It's just 89 units based on the underlying CRD development requirements for density. It didn't matter. Which is all we're making a recommendation on. Correct. How they set it up from a form of ownership standpoint so, is not relevant to us. It's, it's, it, but what, what it says for the condo hotel is you can't occupy it for more than, for, for more than 30 days. That's what keeps it a transient unit once you go over that 30 days. It's no longer transit. We have to calculate the density a different way. It becomes more of a residential density calculation. So that's why it just says 89 units, transient units. That's it. George, is it 60 days or 30 days? I saw 60 days. It's 60 days total in a year. It's so no it's more than 30 days in a row. Then there has to be 60 days in between the 30s. That's that's it, Mr. Smith. What I was, when I'm referring to 30 days, it can't be occupied more than 30 days. Right. But then it can be used multiple times during the year. Um, any other questions of Mr. Kinney? Thoughts? Motion? Um, I, I, I just want to uh, make this point again. I made it when we were talking about the staff report. Um, this project does meet all the requirements of the code, the parking issues, and I know it's a problem, uh, but you know, the, hopefully the city is responding to this parking problem by finding other places to park, okay, or building a parking garage, okay? So I know that's an issue. But this project does meet all the requirements that, that we have established. Staff has said that this is compatible, that compatibility is not an issue. It meets the uh, objective 2.9, okay? It meets all that criteria, all right? The only issue is, is was that height on that C Street, the setback, the side side yard setback, and uh, the, uh, the movement of the walls in lieu of the second floor setback. Those are the only three issues that this, this project does not comply with that needs a special approval, okay? So um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, I, I don't personally have an issue with, with the, the three items that, that uh, they have requested. Um, I do have some issues with the design, and I guess I... I, I made the, my, my point quite clear about that arcade and uh, about uh, maybe opening up that corner a little bit more at, at Main Street and Douglas. Um, so uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from uh, with this project. Um, and I'll listen to anyone else that would like to say something. What I see on this um, agenda item is review and make a recommendation of the di design review application to remove a th existing three-story <coughs> office building and build a new 197,805 square foot, two to four-story mixed-use building located on Main and Douglas. Okay, those three items there, but I'm looking at the all of this, and I think that we've heard some some recommendations that are very important. And I don't like the parking situation, and I'm not sure that it can be rectified, and I don't know how much longer it will take for that parking garage to be built, but we're not talking about it's gonna be built next week, and um, nor is this project. Perhaps it'll be built simultaneously and the problem will be resolved. Um, but I just, um, I. We love Dunedin, and gee, this is, I'm not going to have my car uh, valeted, okay? And there may be others 
<laughs> on the dais, I don't either. I don't know. But I just don't feel that there is a, I, I, I don't feel that this is adequate parking. And I really appreciate the fact that Mr. Parlo Pear came up here and expressed his concerns about that. And Mr. Roberts. Anyone else? Um, kind of take a little different angle on the parking thing. Um, I mean, the, the project's beautiful. It, uh, it, it, to me, it fits. It fits. The parking is not an issue with me. It shouldn't be an issue with the owner. He has kind of met all the requirements that he had to meet. It really falls back on the city to figure out the parking as these projects come up. And, and they're doing it. They're trying it. They bought a piece of property. Things are going to take some time. I live in downtown. I know parking can be. We're not 100% full year round. Um, I will valet. I valet in a lot of downtowns and some big cities and those guys know what they're doing. They're hiring them to do their job. So I, I don't see it being as big a problem as, as, as a lot of people will, but I could be proven wrong. Um, other than that, I think it's a beautiful project and I look forward to, to it going up. Yeah, I think part of what we're seeing here tonight is what we've seen over the course of the last few years, which is this project, whatever the project is on this site, is going to have a major impact upon our community. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm quite surprised, as a matter of fact, that there are not more members of the public here tonight to express their views. Uh, that may be the biggest surprise <laughs> tonight. Uh, so I hope that the, the owner of this project understands how important this is to the, to the city of Dunedin and its residents and will do everything they can to make this a project that has the least negatives and the most amenities for the people who live here. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Well, <clears throat> ultimately someone has to decide, be it, it won't be us, but ultimately somebody has to decide, is this project good for John and Sally Dunedin, for the average person that lives in Dunedin. Is it good for them? Great, it meets all of the criteria. If it's not, then something else has to be looked at. Well, I'll make a motion for approval uh, of design, design review. review. Design review application. Oh, yeah. Design review application 21-09. Uh, with the uh, hope that uh, the uh, project architect and developer can take a look at uh, some of the uh, design issues that have been brought up. Um, also the concern uh, of our parking issues that I think we all acknowledge uh, that we have. Um, I guess that's my motion. I'll second that motion. So moved and seconded to uh, recommend approval. Question, Madam Chair. please. Uh, Question. Yes, Sorry. Madam Chair, just a minute. Um, is the motion subject to the nine conditions listed by the city or just approval? I'm sorry. The, the, the motion is subject to the conditions set forth by city staff, okay? I've added my concern about design and... Uh, the concern about parking. Uh, Mr. Walensky is And specific, second. I think uh, Dan means the design at the corner of Douglas and Main Street. Right. Is your, your second and those I'll conditions as to? Okay. Yep. It's been moved and seconded to recommend uh, approval of the design review application 21-09. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by the same sign. Aye. aye. Maybe a roll call. Do you want a roll call? So, um, Steve Sandberg? Nay. Daniel Becerra? Aye. Diane Brown? Nay. Adam Smith? Aye. Matthew Wilinski? Aye. James Roberts. Aye. 
We got Dennis. Dennis Osborne. I'm sorry, I put that. <laughs> Dennis Osborne. I'm Hi. sorry, Dennis. So we have a five yes, I and two no. All right. We'll move on to our open forum. It's an opportunity for the board members to discuss items not otherwise on the agenda. It is getting late. <coughs> Some of us do have child duties. <laughs> I just had one, and this week I gave them a heads up what it is. Uh, Washington and Huntley, where that building has been torn down. Just what, maybe what's going in there? <clears throat> the, the, uh, the former quilt shop. The quilt shop, right. right. Yeah, so um, our understanding is the folks who own Lucky Lobster are, have acquired that property and are looking to redevelop it. It's going to be some parking, and they're looking at doing another, uh, a possible food component there to complement Lucky Lobster. Okay. They've, we've had some initial discussions with them about that. I think it's, that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a question with regards to the uh, condominium complex or townhouses. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, they're at uh, Skinner and uh, Broadway. It seems to be at a stop. Haven't seen much action on it lately. Where Skinner uh, dead ends. Oh, oh the, uh, the multi-use building that fell down. The one that fell down, the wall that fell <laughs> I don't know yeah, about that. I, I, oh, you didn't hear about that? No. Yeah, we had all that heavy rain or something, and one of the walls went down. I think the property you're speaking of is at the corner of Tilden and Broadway. It's a yes. 990 Broadway. It used to be a, yeah. a birthing center or something. Yes. Yeah, um, I've had a conversation with, the, with the, somebody associated with the project. I think they're uh, kind of on a standstill because of some issues with the um, insurance and the fact that there was that partial collapse. And I think they're trying to resolve that before they gear back up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's like a block wall fell. Anything else? Any other questions, thoughts? I'll make a motion for adjournment. No, I'm sorry, I can't have you do that just yet. I want to announce our next LPA meeting, <laughs> but then I'll, I'll hold that thought. Our next LPA meeting is scheduled for December 8th, 2021 at 6 o'clock here at City Hall. Oh, aren't we having a special one before that? No, that, no, canceled. that was canceled. Oh. It was canceled. Why was that canceled? When was it? Why was that canceled? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think the uh, commission has decided that, yeah. to make the, the project that was intended to come to you was the South Douglas Overlay project. Yes. And um, I think there was a feeling that additional public input was probably necessary before it got to your level. So um, we've reached back out to consultant. They're going to provide us with um, uh, a scope for two more meetings, including a work session meeting with the commission and another pub full public outreach meeting, and then it'll that will bring it back. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that about pu more public input. I didn't see this noticed. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. I, saw, I got a notice about one meeting that happened maybe like a month ago, yeah. but I barely got noticed and about I that. And I kind of live down those, that way, yeah, or, you know, I just south of downtown. Those out, and I didn't see it. And I was shocked that there was very few Did public here for this tonight's application. Yes. Oh, no, not tonight. Did you see it? No, not no, tonight's they, no. I'm talking about the one that, they're talking about the Southwest. No, I saw, yeah, I have saw that. Library. That was noticed, but I'm referring to the design review. I did not see that in this the paper. paper. For this meeting today? Yes. I did. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how I missed it. Design review doesn't carry out the design. Uh, that's why we didn't have public. Except for the... Before I make this motion, <laughs> I believe someone wants to speak to you. Um, um, it, we'll have to close the meeting, if you don't mind. Can I put myself on the agenda for your next meeting? Bring up the subject? Um, can we adjourn the meeting? Yes, we can. Can we adjourn quick? Will, or do you want this? You this? Adjourn, as long as I come back at your well, oh, she ought to just go to the Rebecca? Is this, is this regarding the design review? No, no. Oh. Okay, um, let's close the meeting and that way the, the rest of the board can leave or stay. Uh, um, Steve? I'll make a motion for adjournment. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign. Thank you, everyone. I know it's been late. Seconded, I apologize. I seconded.
should have stated it. I won't validate. Free I to go. Say it. I won't. I know. I, I did. I said it. I just, I just when saying, I looked I up, it was already. Said, I don't I know people's validate. voices. Yet, so. know so. <laughs> because I live downtown. Hi. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.